Getting lost in the music is great, except if you're driving. Nissan's available Intelligent Safety Shield technologies could help you avoid bad drivers. Hurry into your local Nissan store and get great offers during the Safety Today event. Or shop ChooseNissan.com today. Now, back to the music. Blog Talk Radio. Here we go. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skylight Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. (laughs) That's right. That's right, folks. Everybody who is tuning in, this is a Baller Friday edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. This is episode number 265 for all the folks that are keeping track of the True Capitalist Radio Show. And before we get into anything else on this Friday the 13th, Baller Friday, free format edition of the broadcast, I'd like to ask everybody to please bookmark the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. It is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And if you haven't already done so, folks, follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost. All right? I mean, I am excited. It's a baller Friday, and it's Friday the 13th. I hope that you're excited, folks. Let me tell you something. We're going to talk about whatever it is that you want to discuss in this broadcast. I'm going to be taking your calls 516-453-9903 516-453-9903 is the number to call into if you want to chime in, if you want to discuss something. Let us know if the lines are busy. Keep trying, for Christ's sake. <clears throat> Excuse me. But let me tell you something. I want to discuss something really fast because here we go again. Here we go again with this bathroom debate, folks. And look, I don't want to keep harping on this subject matter. But now you've got the president setting forth decrees on how public schools should respond in relation to this whole transgender bathroom debate nonsense. Now, look, folks, if you haven't been following me on Twitter, go ahead and do so, Uh, Politics Ghost. I tweeted a genuine transgender woman, okay? And it actually looks like a woman. Now, the reason I tweeted that picture, folks, and that's actually uh, the first transsexual Miss Universe, believe it or not, folks, for you folks that are curious. Uh, But, folks, no one would question if that transgendered woman went into a woman's bathroom and had to, I don't know, relieve themselves, nature calls, whatever, all right, whatever. No one would ever even question, no one would even think twice. There would be no need for laws or any decrees from the goddamn president on this freaking ridiculous notion. This has nothing to do with gender identity. I believe that the transgendered community has been hijacked by these leftist liberals that are attempting to social engineer our, our civilization – our society into some kind of sick, perverted, warped I, I, I don't know, scenario. I have no idea. I mean, in my personal opinion, folks, I mean, this whole bathroom debate is rooted in nothing but perversion. Absolute perversion. There is no other way of viewing it, all right? Because I'm telling you, if you are a genuine transgendered woman, because this is who they're really talking about, folks. They're really talking about uh, males that are trying to transition into females, supposedly, 
that want to go and relieve themselves in a woman's restroom, all right? But, folks, this goes beyond that, all right? This goes deeper. It's a social engineering attempt by the left to incept a ridiculous notion, uh, a smokescreen, if you will, a divide-and-conquer mechanism, and that's exactly what it's doing, for Christ's sake. And as you can see, it is working hook, line, and sinker. Now, once again, I am going to just touch on this issue very, very lightly, and then I'm going to move on with the broadcast because this is a Baller Friday edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show, and I do want to take your calls. But, folks, we got to drop this issue already. It's a red herring issue. It's ridiculous. I mean, with all due respect to the transgender, transtestical community, I mean, these people barely make up, what is it, 0.4, 0.5% of the population. And with all due respect, I don't think that that 0.5% of the population is really troubled by this whole public bathroom notion. If you want my personal opinion, I think there's a lot more uh, scarier situations uh, that are affecting the transgendered community, such as uh, the murder rates, suicide rates, uh, these types of issues that affect the transgendered community as a whole, as opposed to some ridiculous, oh, uh, which shit stall can I go into? I mean, this is ridiculous. I'm tired that, I mean, look, I wouldn't even be talking about it today had our goddamn president not come out and said, well, you know, I'm going to issue a decree that uh, people who are like my Michael, I mean, Michelle, I mean, uh, excuse me, I'm issuing a decree on bathrooms in public schools. Now, of course, the reason that the uh, president can do this so confidently, folks, is because a lot of these damn public schools are collecting federal funds. And, uh, you know, if they don't oblige the goddamn president's decree on letting, you know, anybody with a wee-wee go into a girl's bathroom, even at the public school level, they are going to get their funds cut. All right? It's all about money, baby. Always remember that. It's always about Money. Always remember that. That's why everyone should be a capitalist. You should have your mindset, your whole idea based on understanding what capitalism is and how to make money on a consistent basis. Because money is everything, baby. It makes the world go round. That's why these politicians are so goddamn crooked. I mean, they're getting paid. Everybody is getting paid, all right? That's what it's all about. That's why I keep telling these socialists and communists out here. It doesn't matter if you want socialism or communism. It's all about money. Money is a mechanism, a motivating force, an organizational factor for civilization. All right? It's all there is to it. I know you political romanticists want to make believe that money can be eliminated and everybody can just go out and work together out of their own free will. That's not how it works. All right? That's not how it works. It never has worked. And if you want to take a good look at that, kind of mentality of no money and trying to tap into the people's will uh, just so that you can get some or extract some labor out of them. Take a look at North Korea. They're operating at that political romanticist level where people are being forced to work so that they can get the menial uh, digs and threads and whatever food this asshole allows them to eat. I mean, I told you, what was it, two months ago, a month and a half ago, this asshole issued a, he issued a statement to his people to prepare for famine. Oh, isn't that a great dear leader? I'm telling you, is that what you socialist communists want? Then when it's famine and you're starving and you don't have crap, then who are you going to blame? Who are you going to blame then, boy? Anyway, I'm digressing here. Once again, I want this damn stupid bathroom issue to go away already, all right? Seriously. I mean, this is just a perverted debate. I'm telling you, if you're a genuine transgendered individual who is making the full transition, you actually look like a woman, a female, well, then no one's going to care. No one's going to care if you go into a woman's bathroom. No one's going to care. No one's going to say, hey, hey, that's a man, baby. No one is going to care, all right? This is just a law to allow perversion within already a perverted public bathroom arena, folks. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but I don't like going into public bathrooms 
because with all due respect, most public bathrooms are a breeding ground for potential toe-tapping, homosexual-like activity, folks. I'm not kidding around. I don't mean to get X-rated here, but, folks, this uh, – I wouldn't even send, uh, you know, my, my children – I, I just – just don't go into public bathrooms anymore. I mean, it, it's already perverted as it is. You know, now they want to send the, the same perversion into the woman's bathroom. Now, I don't even know what's going on in the woman's bathroom. I don't care, all right? I don't care. I don't care if they're in there, uh, you know, taking turds the size of the Empire State Building, as long as they come out smelling nice and, uh, you know, properly, you know, uh, cl- cleaning themselves, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, I'm just, I mean, this is just a perverted debate. This has nothing to do with gender identity. The people that are backing this debate up have no idea what the hell gender identity is. Not that I know either, but uh, I can genuinely understand it because, uh, like I said, folks, for some reason, we got a lot of transgender trans testicles that listen to this broadcast for whatever reason. And I speculate that it's because of the manly dominance that I'm throwing around this goddamn Internet like it ain't shit. But regardless of what the reason is, uh, you know, through conversating with some of these transgenders, uh, I've come to understand that their prime directive is unlike the uh, gays, the lesbians, and the uh, gender-fluid queers. Uh, And that's their terminology, folks. I'm not trying to be, uh, of course, derogatory. That's what they call themselves, gender-fluid queers, all right? That's why the LGBTQ, they added a Q at the end of that. That's what the Q stands for, for Christ's sake. The prime directive, in my view, of, uh, you know, lesbos, gays, and gender-fluid queers is purely carnal, pure sexuality. I mean, that's the prime motivating factor of people who identify first. You know, not, hey, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, or hey, I'm a professional, hey, I'm a salesperson, hey, I'm a good person, hey, I'm a nice person, hey, I'm a mean person. No, no. The first thing they want you to know as soon as you meet these people is that they're a lesbian, gay, or gender-fluid queer. Now, as I've stated previous, folks, those who define themselves based on sexuality – have no respect for themselves right off the bat. And the proof is all the promiscuous activity and the avenues, the digital avenues that are provided for these gays and lesbians and gender-fluid queers to participate in such carnal, random, promiscuous activity. Now, the, the reason I talk about this, folks, is because I'm sick and tired of the gay community claiming that, oh, we want a gay marriage, oh, we want rights, and we want a civil union. <laughs> folks, I will say this, and I will continue to say it, all right? I believe that... Uh, Monogamy as it relates to the majority, and I've always said, folks, a group is defined by its majority. The majority of lesbians, gays, and gender-fluid queers are not monogamous, all right? And even if they do have a, quote, significant other, they're utilizing the same digital venues as those that are independently, individually promiscuous to attain uh, other sources of sexual activity, to put it lightly, all right? And as I've stated, folks, the only reason that I suggest, you know, people view uh, these digital avenues of sexual promiscuous activity as it relates to gays, lesbians, and gender-fluid queers is because once people understand what these people are doing, then we can have a true dialogue with these people and say, hey, wait a minute, LGBTQ. All right, I'm not, I, I should exclude the T out of there because I'm not in- including transgenders in there because transgenders' prime directive, I personally believe, is not purely carnal. It's not purely sexual. It's a completely different uh, mindset, unlike the lesbians, the gays, and the gender-fluid queers, all right? Now, I'm not trying to say that, you know, there aren't isolated incidents or, you know, other examples within this community of lesbians, gays, and queers that aren't monogamous or don't have a significant other and don't have a successful, I don't know, careers, businesses. 
I'm sure there are, all right? But for the most part, that is not the case. And you see, what's unfortunate is that p- people that identify exclusively, I mean, right when you first meet them, all right, as, uh, as a gay or a lesbian or a gender-fluid queer, they don't have respect for themselves, folks. And I, I know that it's probably going to shock a lot of people that are like, oh, my God. I'm homosexual, and I don't understand what you're talking about. I have all kinds of respect for myself. Well, if you had respect for yourself, uh, you'd be a little bit more enlightened on your strife. And I don't believe that the gays especially are, you know, enlightened on the homosexual strife and what it's taken uh, from, uh, I would say, the 70s to now from being oppressed and beaten and, uh, you know, gay-bashed and so on and so forth to being able to hop on grinder and, uh, you know, be able to, you know, service somebody on a sexual nature within 15 minutes. I mean, this is how, this is where we've gotten, okay? And I'm just saying that I personally don't believe that the majority of people that identify as gay and lesbian, I don't believe they're truly gay and lesbian. All right, I'm serious. I think that people have gotten so out of touch, this social engineering of our goddamn Uh, society by these liberals, these freaking politicians, these bureaucrats, they have warped the minds of, uh, Jesus Christ, the West. I was going to say America, but the West. Everybody is lonely. Everybody is just, you know, sitting there alone. Uh, You know, you got the inception of Hollywood. You know, all these women, they want to pretend that they want to live in a romantic comedy that doesn't exist. And you've got these males out here that are driven by the visual imagery of whatever Hollywood is pumping out is what is deemed the hot chick nowadays. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I think you've got a lot of lonely people out here. And I think that uh, everybody needs group dynamic for some reason. I mean, they've dumbed down America so bad that everybody needs to belong to some kind of group. Haven't you noticed that? I mean, that's where this whole social justice warrior nonsense is spawned from. Wanting to belong to some kind of a goddamn group. I mean, it's just pathetic, you know? And I think that's exactly what's happening here with this whole LGBTQ movement. You're having a lot of lonely people that are a little lonely between their legs. You know what I'm saying? That, uh, that you know, need some attention in the private parts. And because, you know, these avenues of homosexual carnality are available at a very easily and, uh, you know, in, in, in some instances, a couple of freaking clicks or uh, a couple of messages away from sexual gratif- gratification, I think that's the prime motivating factor for why a lot of people are identifying as homosexual and lesbian at this point in time. And that's why I alluded to the transgenders. You need to completely just disassociate yourself from the gays, the lesbians, and the gender-fluid queers. Because in your instance, in my opinion, I I mean, of course, everybody wants to have sexual gratification, but this is a gender identity issue. This is one who has succumbed to the fact that they are more of a woman. You understand? They are more of a... Uh, a female, and they have either observed or felt, or I'm not going to get into that debate whether it's learned or you're born. I don't, I don't, I don't know, and I don't really care to be honest with you. But for whatever reason, they feel that they want to be a woman, and these are people that want to be a woman at a very early age. All right, I think that there should be a cutoff point on when the hell you should become a woman. I think after you, you know, you've lived your twenties and you're going into your 30s, and then you just have a hair up your ass, literally or figuratively, to become a woman, I don't think you should become a woman. I mean, just look at this idiot Jenner. This, you know, Kate, like, just call me Caitlyn. Caitlyn Jenner, for Christ's sake. Now this idiot, it comes out, according to his biographer, allegedly, that he's having, uh, you know, post-sex change regret. Uh, Oh, isn't that a shame, folks? I mean, give me a freaking break. I mean, this should be an insult to every transgender that had to, you know, literally live through the life of ridicule and shame and, and struggle and, and everything that you have to go through because you, you genuinely, for whatever reason, you genuinely want to be a woman, 
Maybe it's because you look better as a woman. I mean, whatever the case might be, I don't care. But I know it's not carnal in nature. It is mental in nature. All right, so that's a big difference, and I don't think that, you know, the, the excuse me, the transgenders should be latching their name and their community with the lesbians, gays, and gender-fluid queers, because that, in my opinion, and let me tell you, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of nonprofit organizations that are LGBTQ that are the ones fueling this whole goddamn debate. I mean, there are lawyers that belong to these nonprofit organizations that are fueling this whole debate, and they have hijacked, in my opinion, the transgender community. And that's why I'm saying, transgenders, brush your shoulders off of the goddamn lesbians, gays, and, and gender-fluid queers. Now, I'm not trying to say that, you know, lesbians, gays, and gender-fluid queers are bad people. I'm just stating the obvious observational uh, situation at hand within our society. And I am witnessing, just, just based on the actions of people, just based on what is happening, that these lesbians, gays, and gender-fluid queers are carnal in nature. And before I drop this issue and take your calls, folks, once again, when you define yourself, all right, based on sexuality, and this goes for heterosexual people, all right? I mean, this goes for, you know, these uh, uh, women that dress uh, scantily clad and, you know, show ass cheeks and, you know, uh, show cleavage. Uh, you know, they are selling sexuality. I mean, anyone who sells sexuality as themselves, as who they are as a human being, I don't understand how that warrants unconditional respect. I don't understand how that, I mean, you know, look, I don't care one way or the other what kind of sexual gratification uh, you partake in. I mean, if you're a capitalist, you pay your taxes, you, you, you make money on your own, you're not collecting entitlements, you can do whatever the hell you want to do. I'm just simply stating, let's get off this social engineering here, which is warping the minds of everybody into believing that, uh, you know, these groups within the LGBTQ community are truly that oppressed because they are not oppressed any longer. All right? I mean, look, I mean, maybe one time they were. I mean, but at this point in time, there is no oppression. I mean, now they're finding things. They're just trying to nitpick. They're calling up bakeries in the Midwest and say, hey, I'm a uh, homosexual, and I want to see if you can actually bake my cake for my wedding. And then when they go, uh, what are you talking about? We don't do that. Then they're like, uh, I got one. And then they, you know, make a media case out of it. It's, it's all this. And now it's the bathroom issue. You understand? Ridiculous. It's a red herring issue, and I'm calling out the trannies, all right? I'm calling out all trannies, she-males. I'm talking true women with penises. I'm not talking about you cross-dressers and transvestites. And once again, folks, I hate to keep redefining these terms, but we live in this society. These idiots uh, and the social engineers of our bureaucratic society are pushing forth this, and I think that you need to be informed on the difference between a transgender and a goddamn cross-dresser and a transvestite. A cross-dresser is some uh, man that dresses up in a woman on the weekends, puts on clown makeup and a wig, and goes to these, you know, homosexual bars and, you know, lip sync or some crap, all right? Now, transvestites, on the other hand, are disgusting idiot men that have no, uh, you know, they, uh, their motivating factor is to dress up like a hideous, disgusting woman for sexual gratification. I mean, these are men that will just put on a dress, literally, have their beards, you know, have their disgusting man bodies, uh, you know, keep their bald head, maybe throw a wig on. And the whole reason why they do this is because they actually take sexual gratification in dressing up like a disgusting piece of garbage, what would be woman. Now, that's the difference, all right? Transgender, they actually want to be a woman 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They want everybody to know they are a woman. That's the point, all right? Cross-dressers, a bunch of men that decide they want to dress like women, put clown makeup on and dance and lip sync uh, at gay clubs. All right, transvestites 
are people, men, regular men, that take sexual gratification and throw on a goddamn dress with their Fu Manchus, bald heads, disgusting man bodies. The only reason that they do this, they do it, you know, just to get a sexual gratification. It's disgusting, I know, but you see, folks, this is what this bathroom debate is having to let people know at this point in time. I mean, you need to be educated on this, because then if you have this knowledge and you have some, uh, you know, lesbian, homosexual, uh, gender-fluid, queer, or transgender, uh, and they're debating this issue, you actually have substance to throw on the debate. And, you know, to be honest with you, this shouldn't even be a debate. If you look like a genuine woman and you go into a woman's bathroom, no one's going to care! So anyway, now that I've gotten all that out of the goddamn way, it's a Baller Friday, Friday the 13th edition. I want to hear from you, folks. 516-453-9903. It's a Baller Friday, free format edition. All right, we're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about, and we're going to go ahead and take some calls here right now. Now, uh, Engineer, do we have any calls to be taken here? Well, apparently we do have some calls to be had. I want to hear from you. We're talking about everything and anything you want to talk about, folks. All right? It doesn't even matter what it is. And please refrain from uh, doing any kind of prank calls or any kind of radio graffiti shenanigans until the radio graffiti time, please. And, of of course, if you're on hold uh, and you're wondering why I don't call on you, uh, press the number 1 so that uh, it can show on my switchboard that you actually want to have a conversation or you want to be on the air, all right? 516-453-9903 is the number to call. We want to hear from you, folks, all right? And, hey, if it's busy, I'm sorry. I mean, the freaking, the switchboard is lit up, for Christ's sake. What can I say? We're listened to throughout the world. And I also want to remind everybody before we take calls, please spread it around like wildfire that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house. We are live, if you are listening to us, uh, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday, we are live. So if you happen to be listening to us right now within the 4 p.m. Central Standard Time hour, you're listening to us live. So give us a call, 516-453-9903. So without any further ado, let's see what happens. Hopefully, uh, you know, we're we're just going to roll with the punches and see what's going on here. How about that? How about 606? You're on the air. What do you want to talk about? Hey, man. I've just been thinking for a while about uh, Trump's VP. Like, that was something. There was a lot of uh, rumbling about that. And I'm just hoping, you know, that, like, uh, we can uh, take off the thick, pretentious, Sam Hyde glasses and, you know, look at this in a, <clears throat> a rational way. And Trump, too, because he's really got to he's really got to strategize, you know. And I don't know if you've seen Mad Max, but I'm going to use this analogy. You know, he's, he's really been a more a toe cutter than a Johnny the boy. And uh, I don't know. You know, I'm just hoping that uh, he can make it. I'm just hoping that he can. You know, a lot of people are saying Jim Webb. A lot of people are saying Steve Rambo. A lot of people are saying Coat Blini. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Ben Carson is another one. Um, but uh, Newt Gingrich, you know, and uh, he's, he's kicking around. He's keeping his options open. And Well, you know, I'm, the- I'm glad you called and uh, glad you brought that up. I am also very concerned about the vice presidential candidate. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of talk as of late on the left. Uh, you heard, uh, you know, Hillary Rotten Clinton throw out a few names out there. You heard him ta- or heard her talk about the uh, Mexican Golden Boy. That's the HUD secretary, Julian Castro. And I- also, I want a Mexican check on Julian Castro and his brother. Wh- what's his brother's name? Jo- Joaquin. Joaquin. That son of a. I want a Mexican check on both those sons of bitches. Because, look, I I said this the other day, and people freaked out. They're like, oh, my God, how can you say that? Their last name is Castro. So what? So what? All right? I I want a Mexican check because, first off, they look like Filipinos to me, first and foremost. And secondly, I read here in an article here about last week 
that they are brushing up on their Spanish. I mean, what a bunch of bureaucratic pieces of crap. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they're fake Mexicans. Uh, anyway, I'm digressing. But once again, I want a Mexican check on the freaking Castro brothers. All right, put it out there. We want a Mexican check. Uh, but I am also rather concerned about Trump's VP. I have heard Ben Carson as a legitimate candidate. Uh, Newt Gingrich is rather surprising. I can understand why, even though in my personal opinion I have stated in the past that Newt Gingrich is nothing more than a, you know, he, he's a, a Republican Obama. You know, when he ran for president, uh, what was it, uh, the last presidential cycle, every goddamn thing that came out of Newt Gingrich's mouth was, whoa, I was in charge of this, and I did this, and I did that. You did nothing, all right? You were Speaker of the House. Uh, you allowed certain debates to happen on the floor. Uh, you had a little bit of influence on what was going to be put into bills. You specifically didn't have anything to do with nothing, all right? And that's the same thing Kasich tried to do with, oh, well, I was in charge of this, and I did that. You did diddly, all right? But uh, I can understand why Donald Trump would entertain Newt Gingrich as a vice presidential candidate because – Newt Gingrich knows the inner workings of Washington, D.C. Moreover, he's still connected to the old conservative wing. I don't remember, you know, the 90s was a long time ago, all right, a long time ago. But I don't know if everybody remembers that conservative wing back then. That's why I was a conservative for so long, because those were true conservatives back in the 90s. And uh, I never thought uh, Gingrich was a real true conservative. I thought he was a sl sleazeball bureaucratic politician, like your you know typical career politicians out here. I mean, but you got like names like uh, Bob Barr, you know, uh, that that was a true conservative right there. Uh, names like uh, Jack Kemp, uh, you know. I mean, I, I'm just uh, you know these these real true uh, conservative uh, names out here that are still lying wait. You know, because the Democrats and the liberals have taken control of the goddamn t entire government, and that includes the Republican Party. But I believe that if he uses Newt Gingrich as a vice presidential ma running mate, it'll be because he has uh, some element of conservative value that can be tapped into uh, to the disenchanted Cruz voters who are still pissed off that lying Ted – Lion Ted Cruz over here uh, didn't fulfill his uh, evangelical obligations. So, yeah, I, I'm very uh, wary about what the hell Trump's going to do. I think that if you want my personal opinion, I think he should entertain my man in the old last uh, presidential cycle who got railroaded by this establishment GOP. And you can look back in the archive. I talked about it back then. I'm talking about my man, Herman Sugar Cane, baby. I think he should he should have Herman Sugar Cane as a damn vice presidential candidate. All right, but I don't think it'll be a long shot. I don't think it'll happen, but I think he should because Herman Sugar Cane was leading the primaries in the 2012 Republican primary cycle. All right, and when he was leading, all of a sudden you had these sleaze balls within the establishment, within the, the Republican Party itself. Unleashed, uh, unleashed uh, sealed court cases relating to Herman Sugar Cane, and uh, that was the end of it. I mean, I mean it, it ruined his uh, chances of being a good president, being a competitor against Barack Obama. All right, I mean, seriously, I mean, Herman Sugar Cane, this man was a capitalist. I'm all for capitalists running for office because I know once they attain office, they're just going to dismantle bureaucracy, baby. <laughs> Woo! And that's exactly what uh, Donald Trump is going to do, boy. I, I, I believe me. All right, I believe me, baby. Anyway, thank you for that call. We're going to continue to take calls here. Five one six four five three nine nine zero three is the number to call. And once again, when you call up, uh, press one if you want to uh, be called on here. I mean, if you're just going to be sitting there, I don't. I, I don't know if you want to be called on or just sitting there playing with your Peter Popper being a Helen Keller dad, damn deaf mute. Anyway, let's take another caller here, shall we? Thanks for that call, by the way. Uh, 973, you're on the horn. What's up? What do you want to talk about? Um, hi. Uh, what do you think about the video game industry? 
Well, the video game industry, uh, let me tell you, I have never been a gamer per se. I stopped playing games when I got conned out of buying that goddamn Sega Dreamcast, which I still have, by the way. It's the only it's the last gaming system I ever bought. Uh, I did buy the Nintendo. I did buy the Atari. I had the Commodore. I had all that crap, all right? Uh, but I never thought that games would be the impact in society that they are being today. I mean, they are surpassing the sales of movies. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, they, they are having that much of an impact in entertainment. I mean, they are a legitimate force to be reckoned with. And uh, I think that it's a good thing and a bad thing because you have a lot of people immersed in these games and not necessarily paying attention to reality, which puts those, i.e., bureaucrats that are paying attention to reality, uh, that much more prepared to take authority. You know, it gives them the leverage to just go ahead and take control. And look, I understand, hey, look, games, you know, they... They're a way to kick off some steam. They're a way to, you know, get away from the world. But at some point in time, you got to put the control down. You got to deal with the world because if you don't, you're going to be in, you're going to be controlled. And you see, folks, that's what Trump candidacy, Trump's candidacy, excuse me, represents. I mean, he is showing that the American spirit is rising up. The the spirit of freedom and liberty is rising up. We do not want to be controlled by a bunch of bureaucrats, all right? And that's what Donald Trump represents. It's a damn capitalist revolution, baby. It's a capitalist revolution. And that's why the capitalists have single-handedly taken control of the GOP, and our eyes are set on the big prize, baby. And I'm talking about the White House. Believe me. Believe me. But as it pertains to video games, uh, I think that it's, you know, it's a decent uh, industry. Everybody likes to be entertained by it. And as we converge into virtual reality, I think that it's going to, you know, possibly expand possibilities even that much more further. I'm actually looking forward to virtual reality, to be completely honest with you. I mean, they need to work out the kinks a little bit. I don't think they've... I've actually tried out a few of these virtual reality uh, headsets and, you know, gaming systems and whatnot. I still think that they're maybe about five to ten years from where they think they are. But as far as I'm concerned, I can't wait till it happens. Uh, you know, just imagine we could be listening to this broadcast and we could have our own virtual reality situation. I mean, we could all be sitting around a campfire you know, we could all be, uh, you know, at a bar, you know, drinking, for Christ's sake. I, could, you know, I mean, just imagine the possibilities. You know, you can create your own avatar. You know, I mean, communication. I, I mean, I think that will be a good factor in uh, virtual reality is the ability to be able to communicate verbally. And uh, I think that's longing in this society is people being able to communicate with one another. And that's why you have a lot of lonely people. So once again, I'm, I mean, I think the gaming industry has come a long ways. I think it's unbelievable what it has achieved. It has far surpassed the revenue potential of Hollywood, and uh, I just think it's even going to get better. My only criticism is that I think people need to put the control down, and when they put the control down, go out and experience life, all right, real life. Seriously, because if you don't, then someone else is going to control this whole society, and sooner or later, that's going to affect your games, just like it's affecting our free speech online now. You understand that? Because everybody was out here doing their own thing, you know, uh, playing on social media, playing on video games, watching cartoons, or whatever the hell they're doing online, instead of focusing on the fact that the people that are paying attention – the people that are actually paying attention to reality are incrementally trying to control your reality because they've got you bamboozled and they've got you kind of in a cloud, you know, in a, in a haze of entertainment that it takes your eyes off the actual situation that's going around you. And what's going around is absolute institutionalizational takeover. Bureaucracy, bureaucrats, we're seeing it on a global scale, and it's ridiculous. Anyway, thanks for your question. 
Once again, this is a Bowler Friday edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. We're taking your calls, free format edition. It's Friday the 13th, folks. All right? Friday the 13th. Ooh, Friday the 13th. Ooh, who gives a crap about that superstitious nonsense? Anyway, let me go ahead and take a swig here because I know it's a Baller Friday. I know there's a lot of individuals that are counting their cash from a hard day's, a hard week's work. And let me tell you something, Friday is always the day to take the evening to kick back, relish, and bask in one's own success, in one's own labor, and one's own ability to carve out their own life. Whatever your life is at this point in time, as long as you carved it out, whether you like it or you don't like it, it can always be changed because you are the master of your domain. Cheers to the capitalist army. Cheers to the capitalist the taxpayers, the workers throughout the world. Cheers to you. This one's for you, for, some, uh, for, for everybody who's out there who understands that this is a capitalist revolution. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> Woo! I'm telling you, Johnny Walker, Blue Label, oh yeah. Let's go ahead and take some more callers here. 516-453-9903 is the number to call. Let's go ahead and take the uh, 205 area code. You're on the horn. What do you want to talk about? Send me through your enemy. Well, we're not talking about enemy, all right? I'm not, I don't want to talk about enemy. I don't care about enemy. I dedicated a whole Sunday show to that crap. Go to the archive and look at it. Uh, 610, what do you want to talk about? Uh, yeah, Gus, uh, I want to talk about uh, Gene Simmons and how much of an irrelevant prick he is. All right, what about him? Are you talking about the uh, recent Prince uh, comments? Well, just his comments in general, just, you know, make him illustrate him as much of a douchebag that he is, you know? I mean, I, let me just ask you this, Gus. Besides Kits, of course, what has he done that's, you know, significant? I agree with you. Believe me, I am not a KISS fan. I, I don't understand why everybody and their brother thinks that KISS is some kind of a badass band. It is mediocre, subpar music as far as I'm concerned. And the only thing that made them interesting was the fact that they put makeup over their disgusting faces and you know decided to dress up in half-ass drag queen. I mean, you want to take a look at drag queen? That, that's what I'm talking about right there, KISS. That's drag queening right there. That's drag queening, all right? Now, I agree with you. I have no idea why these people became so popular. I, I'm still baffled by it. I don't understand it. I mean, even hardcore rockers of modern-day rock look to these losers as some kind of a goddamn inspiration. I have no idea. But the reason that uh, Gene Simmons is still around, folks, and uh, look, I don't like the man. I don't like Kiss. I think they're pieces of trash. I, I mean, I would probably bitch slap uh, Gene Simmons if I saw him. But the reason that he's around is because he's a capitalist, all right? I mean, you know, this guy isn't stupid. He owns the rights to his music. They own the rights to the KISS tour. I mean, do you know that as, as a, in the music industry, the money is in the touring, all right? And that's why Rolling Stones cannot stop touring. I mean, they're not doing it because, oh, yes, yeah, I just love the rock music, baby. You know, I always love it, baby. You know what I'm saying? No, they're doing it because these tours can gross 50, 60, 100 million dollars. 100 million dollars for a freaking tour. I'm talking about a good tour. Like they're, they're working their ass off. It's like 300 shows in the year. 280 to 300 shows in the year. I'm talking that type of touring. I mean, that is just unbelievable money. But of course, you have to sell yourself to attract the crowds to pay the prices for those uh, tickets, so on and so forth. Moreover, Gene Simmons, he not only owns the rights to his music, but he also owns the rights to the likeness, to the KISS logo, to the KISS brand, to the KISS, I mean, everything. So this, this guy, he's capitalized it all the way to the bank. He's marketed the KISS brand, and, you know, Jesus Christ, there's, there's a, there, I saw a KISS pinball machine, uh, the Kiss the Movie, uh, Kiss Lunchbox, uh, there's a Kiss Casino out there, so there's a, well, not a casino, but a part of a casino dedicated to Kiss out there in Las Vegas. 
I mean, just imagine, that is where he capitalized on. He's just a capitalist, man. He took his money that he made from Kiss, you know, playing the band, and he parlayed that and kept it working for him. And let me tell you, when you make a lot of money, and people are going to want to know who the hell you are. I'm serious. I mean, have you make the type of money, the kind of money that Gene Simmons has made post-Kiss? And I'm telling you, they're going to want to know who you are, what you're thinking, what you're doing. You're going to be asked for interviews. Uh, business journals are going to be asking who you are. I'm talking big money. I mean, you know, this is why Gene Simmons is around. The guy's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if he's approaching a billion. So believe me, I think he's a complete asshole. But, you know, when you're a capitalist, you can do that, you know. <laughs> Woo! That's the beautiful part about being a capitalist, baby. You know what I mean? I mean, look, I hate a lot of people. Look, I hate Pootie Pie. I hate freaking uh, Markipiler. But I know those sons of bitches are making, like, what, tw- $20 million a year or some crap? I mean, Jesus Christ! I mean, don't get me wrong. I think they're talentless bricks. I think they're fruiting up the place. All right? But they're capitalizing. You know what I mean? I mean, they're not going to break character. I mean, whatever got them the secret sauce that got them there, they ain't going to change it. All right? So, look, I mean, that's the, the beautiful part about uh, freedom, too. That's a f- beautiful part about uh, being free to dislike somebody for whatever reason you want. So if you want to hate on Gene Simmons, by all means, to hate on Gene Simmons. You want to hate on me, by all means, hate on me, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, this isn't Turkey, you know, where you criticize the freaking prime minister, you, you know, and you're from another country. He can throw you in jail. So once again... Uh, uh, I know you hate Gene Simmons. I don't really like him either, but, hey, you want to be like Gene Simmons? You want to be a prick to everybody? You want to just mouth off and do whatever? Be a capitalist, baby. That's it. <laughs> just be a capitalist, baby. Anyway, uh, 619, what's going on? What do you want to talk about, man? Hey, you go. It's uh, Asho. And hey, what's all going on, about... Asho? I'm driving, by the way. I've been wanting to talk about... Um... Uh, Mexican, uh, Mexican that are born in the U.S. and they use the education system in the U.S. and they live in Mexico, so they take advantage of. They they are born in the U.S. and they take advantage of a uh, of the education system. So they're born in the U.S. but now live in Mexico, yeah. but still yeah. go to school in the U.S. Yeah. What do you think about those people? Uh, Well, unfortunately, I don't particularly uh, care for uh, people that are born here in America uh, trying to throw the flag out. And, look, I don't care. I mean, look, it's all all good if you have heritage, pride, and so on and so forth, all right? But what the Mexican-Americans are doing in America today is completely irrational and ridiculous, All right, I mean, these people are out here throwing a freaking Mexican flag in the air, and they don't even, they've never even been to Mexico. They don't even know what Mexico is, for Christ's sake. I know I talked about this on a previous show that uh, everybody went up in arms because, uh, you know, Donald Trump showed himself eating a taco bowl uh, for uh, Cinco de Mayo, or Fifth of Mayonnaise, is what I like to call it. And everybody went up in arms like, oh, man, that's not Mexican food, man. Oh, oh, oh. Give me a freaking break, man. I mean, you people that are in California, and I'm talking to you Mexicans in California, you Mexicans out here in Texas, for Christ's sake, you don't even know what Mexican food is, you idiots. I mean, some of you may have gone to Mexico. Maybe you all know Mexican food. Maybe you don't. I don't care. But as I've stated, folks, uh, the Mexicans that are out here in Mexico, all right, uh, or excuse me, the Mexicans that are out here in Texas, excuse me, uh, they have converged the two civilizations. As a matter of fact, out here uh, in, like, Austin, down to New Braunfels, Texas, uh, going into uh, San Antonio, going into Crystal City, uh, all this whole area out here is a convergence of the Mexican communities, of the German communities. Believe it or not, folks, uh, Crystal City, Texas, uh, was the internment camp uh, for German citizens during World War II. Uh, after they were released out of the internment camps, a lot of them you know, just kind of uh, settled here. Moreover, folks, 
uh, the Germans have a huge influence within the Mexican culture. Within, I'm talking from Mexico. Hence why Mexico produces so much beer. Uh, beer craft is basically German in nature. I mean, this is where it all originates. I mean, of course, I mean, beer goes back to Egypt, but I'm talking about uh, as it relates to making its way over here across the pond from Europe or, uh, or, or from the old world, I should say. Uh, it's, a, it's a craft that the Germans have had and they've passed down for, Jesus Christ, a thousand years. I mean, I mean, just a, literally a craft. And that's why when you take a look at a lot of these Mexican beers and you take a look at who originated them, they were all German immigrants, all right? So whenever I hear about Mexican pride and La Raza and La Raza Unida and all this other crap, I have to laugh because with all due respect, you know, I've said this time and time again, the Mexican people are nothing more than the rapings of the conquistadors on the natives that lived there. And we talked about Cortez and how, you know, the Aztecs, you know, brought him in, thought he was a nice guy, and, and uh, Cortez couldn't believe that everybody was bowing down to the Aztec leader Montezuma like a god. And then when he called this big commencement, uh, you know, and they saw how they were bowing down to Montezuma like a god, Her, Cortez cut Montezuma's head off. Right in front of all the Aztecs, they couldn't believe it. They were in shock. The conquistadors pillaged, raped, and the rest is history, okay? Moreover, you have a convergence of all kinds of different races within Mexico as well. So, I mean, I, I'm sick of this stupid, you know, debate about La Raza. I mean, I have nothing against Mexicans. Don't get me wrong. I mean, look, I call them Latinos, okay, because I don't believe – that the majority of people that are of Latino descent in America are exclusively Mexican from Mexico. You've got a lot of people from South America. You've got a lot of people from, uh, you know, Cuba. You've got a lot of people from Puerto Rico. You've got a lot of people from Dominica. You've got a lot of people from all over the place, Panama, uh, Venezuela, uh, Ecuador, uh, Brazil. I mean, you, you know, these are Argentina, Chile. I mean, these are all Latino South American countries, and it just goes to show you how the left has been able to pigeonhole everybody in this Latino debate under one umbrella as it relates to uh, La Raza or as it relates to racism, divide and conquer, such nonsense. So with all due respect, uh, Asho, I, I mean, you know, hey, I, I, it sucks that, uh, you know, you've got Mexican-Americans who were born here they're going back to Mexico to live and then coming over here to, you know, go to school. Hey, what are you going to do about it, man? I mean, you know, you've got people that are collecting thousands of dollars a month because they've got five or six kids from five or six different fathers. And instead of actually feeding those children, uh, they're just letting their children be fed by the free breakfast and free lunch provided by public education. That's why you've got all these goddamn uh, single mothers out here, they got their hair did, they got their nails done, they got their Louis Vuitton bag, they're all decked out, they got gold, they got jewelry, and meanwhile, you've got their ch children, you know what I mean? The children just kind of shriveled up like a prune, uh, you know, not growing correctly or malnourished, or if it's not that, they're the complete opposite. They're fat, disgusting uh, piles of protoplasm. Uh, that have been uh, induced by just throwing sugar to shut them up, all right? Anyway, I, I, I don't want to talk about that anymore. So thanks for calling, Asho. I really appreciate it. We're taking some more callers here, folks. Uh, this is a Baller Friday, 30, uh, Friday the 13th edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. Let's go ahead and take some more callers, shall we? And if you want to call in, uh, all you have to do is uh, give me a call, 516 Four five three nine nine zero three is the number to call. Uh, let's go ahead and take some more callers here. I do believe we've got Trump and capitalist. Uh, are you on the horn, man? What's going on? Good afternoon, Ghost. This is the Trump and capitalist here. How are you today? Well, I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? You got some more four one one on uh, any of the stuff you've been uh, investigating? Well, yes, I do. This is on Hillary Clinton. But first, I want to address something that's actually pretty scary for me. 
and it's also pretty concerning. Uh, there was a blogger in Indiana who twi- who was actually writing about the crew's uh, Oswald. JFK, uh, the, the JFK assassination, uh, how his dad was tied to Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah, we retweeted the an article put out about that. Uh, yeah, I understand your concern, but go ahead. Yeah, basically, he was found dead with a with a shot with like a gunshot wound in his stairwell, and believe and supposedly it's a suicide. But I have really good doubts about that. I have really big doubts about that because I just he wasn't. I don't think he was suicidal. I don't think he was depressed. He, he was just a blogger, and he and he just was dead. He was dead in a day. He was fine the next day, and he was gone the next. Well, uh, I'm telling you, uh, I've always suggested to everybody that politics is serious business. Uh, that's why I left the show for a few years. Believe me, I mean, this is the, just the state of the game. This is cloak and dagger stuff, man. I mean, remember, these bureaucrats aren't going to go quietly. You know, I mean, they have the power uh, of all the weapons at their at their disposal. Now, from what I've found is that typically those who uh, basically are sniped or suicided in this capacity are basically put forth to send a message to others. Now, in my personal opinion, I mean, I think there are too many of us to be intimidated. Uh, we are the new media, all right? I mean, you know, they, they, I mean, if each and every one of us goes out, has a blog, or spreads information th- via video, or, uh, you know, retweets or uh, spreads out <clears throat> news articles or information via their sphere of influence and in social media, I mean, we are actually making bigger of a difference and more of an influence than the lamestream mainstream media. And in my personal opinion, this is just a, uh, an attempt to try to suppress those that are thinking about getting off the sidelines and getting on the front lines and helping us uh, uh, just spread the information around like wildfire. But go ahead, man. I hear you. I hear you on that. I mean, it's it's just like some sort of like psyop to just get all those journalists that want to tweet something, want to write something, then all of a sudden somebody gets suicide and they all go running off. So that's pretty concerning. Now I wanted to talk to you about Hillary Rodham Clinton. Uh, first and foremost, do you know a person by the name of Saul Alinsky? Saul Alinsky, of course. Uh, you know the classic leftist agitator that wrote uh, the book on leftist agitation. Yep. Uh, basically, there was there was a letter discovered from uh, Hillary Clinton to Solinsky that basically, you know, praises him as the greatest community organizer in modern history. That you know, just says he's a great Democrat and that he wants she wants to buy his book. I mean, she was basically kissing his ass. Excuse my language, but she was basically, you know, funny. You know, she was just kissing up to this guy. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Today, Bridget Griffin shared a video of her daily yoga routine, two self-help articles, and her new blog called Build Your Inner Bridge with Bridge. Girl, your sharing has turned into oversharing. No worries, Bridge. Geico has some info worth sharing with your seven blog followers, like how you could save money on your car insurance, update your policy, and report a claim just by visiting geico.com. How's that for building your inner bridge? Bridge, Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. I mean, it doesn't surprise me one bit, given the uh, uh, the conniving political tactics that she utilizes either to attain power or to sustain power. Uh, classic Solinsky tactics. I mean, it, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, the same thing with Obama. That's why all these leftist Democrat tactics come directly from the Solinsky book. So uh, there is, uh, you know, I guess a letter that uh, Hillary Clinton wrote to Saul Linsky? That's correct. That is correct. And uh, the contents of it, basically, you know, it's like, uh, Dear Saul, when is the new book coming out, or has it come out? Now, and have I somehow missed the fulfillment of Re- Revelation? I've just had my 1,000th conversation with Reverend Redville, and I need some new material to throw at me. Basically, she wanted to know when the book was coming out. She wanted to know what was in it. She wanted to know what to do. She wanted to know how to get more Democrat democratic or, you know, more liberal. I mean, she was kissing his, kissing his butt. Oh, man. Well, I, I'm, it does not surprise me one bit, uh, old Hillary Rotten, for Christ's sake. Uh, I mean, just her political tactics alone just underscores uh, their Solinsky-like tactics. 
Uh, hey, uh, do you want to give your uh, blog a plug here? Uh, i got to go to these uh, Twitter shout-outs uh, and uh, get on with the rest of the broadcast. I want to give a little bit more time to Radio Graffiti. Uh, is there anything well, else you want to give us the 411 on? Well, one more thing, and then I'll be gone. Uh, basically, the Bill and the Moon Gates Corporation, basically they're a bunch of their buddies with Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton and the uh, Gates and the Clinton Foundation. Basically, what I found is that they gave $25 million to uh, the Clinton Foundation. I was actually looking at their returns and their little tax returns, all the financial information, and see what the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has invested. There is at least $24 billion invested in a stock market and an extra billion in corporate. And basically, these are not little companies. These are major companies such as McDonald's, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Walmart. I mean, big-name companies. And basically, there's a lot of ties with major companies. And when somebody of a major donation, somebody of a major corporation gives that big of a donation, it makes you wonder where that money came from. Was it was it stock returns? Was it uh, IOUs from corporations? I don't know. Of course. I mean, it just gets deeper and deeper, this rabbit hole with the Clintons, and it relates to where the money goes, and you just follow the money. I hear you on that, man. Hey, you want to give your yeah. uh, a, bl- a blog a plug here real fast? Yes, I will. Uh, my blog is the God of Rage dot WordPress dot com. My Twitter is uh, Trump and Capitalist, as known as the God of Rage. That's the Twitter handle. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, then that's great. If you want to follow my blog, that's a wonderful ghost. I hope you have an amazing day. And may capitalism live forever. Thank you very much, there, Trump and Capitalist. Really appreciate the four one one. Once again, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, $25 million in the Hillary Clinton account, or actually the Bill and Hillary Clinton account. What else is new? Anyway, folks, I want to go ahead and get to Twitter shout-outs right now, folks. Uh, and for those of you that are unaware, all you have to do to get a Twitter shout-out live on the broadcast right now is to retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. All right? And the Twitter account is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores, politics ghost, and retweet the tweet that says, True Capitalist Radio, now live. All right, not the pinned tweet, the one that says, True Capitalist Radio, now live. All right, do we have any uh, Twitter shout-outs, Engineer? All right, well, we got a couple of Twitter shout-outs, and we're going to get to them right now. All right, we've got Scribes of Death, uh, Ed Plus in the house, Cosmo CB, uh, Go North Ghost, oh, Jesus Christ, Capitalist for Trump, John SK in the place, uh, True Engineer Radio. No, no, don't start that crap, all right? The engineer is not the talent. I'm the talent. Do you understand that? I'm the talent. Anyway, we've got uh, the Ann and the Wizard, UK Ghosty, CDI Fan 237. Uh, we've got uh, Poop Bucket. Oh, that's just great. Uh, we've got Based Loller in the house. Uh, it is uh, it was a John Conquest. Yeah, real funny. Uh, we've got uh, Capitalist UK, Raiden Snake. Jesus Christ. Who else do we got going on? Once again, all you have to do is retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, and I will give you a Twitter shout-out right here, right now, live on the broadcast. All right, let's see who else do we got going on out here. I'm telling you, some of these sick-ass, twisted, freaking names, man. I I don't get it. Where do you all come up with this crap? Anyway, we've got AJ Styles, 1987, in the place. Uh, Alamo Shark Tank, real funny, asshole. Look, it has not stopped raining. I mean, we're expecting more rain out here in Austin, Texas. It's raining too much in Texas. Stop it, Harp. Just stop it. You're trolling us out here in Texas now, Harp. You're trolling us, and I want you to stop it. Stop this rain right now, or I'm going to have to do some goddamn anti- uh, Indian rain dance or some kind of garbage here. I'm serious. It's getting too ridiculous. Not on Friday the 13th. Not on my baller Friday. Anyway, who else we got? We got Manhood Magic. We got Sergeant Build the Wall. What's going on to Sergeant Yoda? Uh, Teutonic Plague in the house. What's going on to the Teutonic Plague? Uh, the Aussie Capitalist Army in the place. Uh, we've got uh, Ghost Simmons. You're a real funny asshole, all right? 
uh, Indiana Ghost and and what? Indiana Ghost and what? Oh my God! Call me Templin. Call me Templin. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, you, you you trolls! I'm telling you, man, you're just sick, sick freaks. Three foot ghost. Uh, real funny asshole. Real funny. I'm not a midget. All right. All right, I'm not a midget. I'm a big bad man out here. I'm telling you, it ain't nothing for me to whoop a man's ass. I'll tell you that right goddamn now. You people that are talking garbage to me on the Internet, you're lucky you're on the goddamn Internet and we're not in a damn bar room right now because you'd be getting your ass beaten to dog meat, boy. You understand that, boy? Anyway, we've got uh, Sham Wiles for Texas. Sham Wiles for Texas. Screw you, asshole. Stop it. Just stop it. Stop with the Texas flood jokes. Stop with the Texas rain jokes. I mean, don't you understand? It's been hailing out here. It was hailing apples the other day. It was hailing apples. Stop it. Just stop. Stop it now. We've got Torzier in the house. We've got regular TSA. What's going on, man? Uh, who else do we got here? We've got uh, Brony424. We've got uh, Zim Tower. Uh, we've got, uh, I'm not going to say that disgusting name for Christ's sake, Matino199 in the house. Ghost Chan Temple Chew. Jesus Christ. I'm just uh, this, I'm just sick. This is just sick, for Christ's sake. Texas liquidity market? You piece of... <laughs> you piece of... Shit. God damn it. God damn it. Stop it. Just stop with the Texas rain jokes. Stop. It's raining too much out here. It's raining too much. Don't you soulless freaks understand that? Good God. Texas liquidity market. Yeah, real fun. <laughs> Shove it up your ass. Shove it up your goddamn ass. Jesus Christ. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me the mic. Give me that freaking mic for Christ's sake. I'm telling you, you scumbags, you better cut this crap out. I'm, I'm not kidding around, man, all right? Stop it. Just stop it with the goddamn uh, freaking uh, Texas rain jokes, Texas flood jokes. Look, this is serious business. This is really affecting uh, Texas out here. Hey, it's starting to get a little too scary out here, to say the least, for Christ's sake. I've never seen so much hail in my life. I've never seen so much hail in my life. Anyway, we've got Granny Tranny Go. Just shove it up your ass. Don't talk about my granny like that, boy. We've got Ninja in the Night. Uh, invaded Sweden. That's horrible, assholes. Horrible. Communist for Trump. You f stupid scumbag. This is a capitalist revolution, and don't you ever forget it, boy. Son of a bitch. Official cozy, all right, capitalism for the world here, fart lungs, uh, fails for McMurray. That's horrible. That's just horrible. Look, I don't even like people from Canada, all right? As I've stated time and time again, I think uh, people from Canada and the whole country of Canada is a pimple on the ass of America, but I do not believe that the Canadians, even though they're a bunch of moose humpers, uh, that stick, you know, maple leaves up their shit funnels. I don't believe that what is happening to them at Fort McMurray should be happening to them whatsoever. That's horrible. Unbelievable, and it's horrible. Anyway, we've got lobotomized ghost. Yeah, real funny asshole. Uh, we've got uh, Skyline 9000 here. Uh, cheese lovers for ghosts. That's disgusting. That's just utterly disgusting. Arton Havoc in the house. What's going on? We're going to just take a couple of more of these Twitter shout-outs, and then we're going to move on with the broadcast. Once again, this is a Baller Friday edition, Friday the 13th edition of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And if you want a Twitter shout-out, go ahead and retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account, boy. It's that simple, that easy, all right? 
Uh, Grove Street for Ghost. Yeah, real funny, you jerk dick. Uh, Action Park, Texas. Shove it up your ass, all right? Enough of that crap. Kiss Lunchboxes for Ghost. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stephen Ghostifers. Oh, Jesus Christ. Molested Farm Boy. Uh, Texas Tsunami. Shove it up your ass with that crap. We got Cobalt Cluster, G-Man Capitalist, Free Zorg in the house. What's going on? Uh, I'm not saying that disgusting name. Catheter Kung Fu. Catheter Kung Fu. What What kind of sick ass? What are you, where do you come up with this crap? Jesus Christ, man. Do you see what's going on on these internets, folks? Are you hearing this? Jesus Christ, we're going to take a couple of more and that's it, all right? That's it! Oh, my God. Incest with mother. Oh, Jesus Christ. The green bio. Uh, autistic plague in the house. Oh, come on, man. Leave the Teutonic plague alone, man. Uh, official hood rats. Uh, I'm not saying that disgusted, freaking sick-ass name. We got the Brony Network in the house. Uh, who else do we got? Six-speed manual gearbox. Uh, we've got the silicone brony in the house. Uh, who the hell else do we got going on over here, for Christ's sake? We've got, uh, uh, I can't, I, I, G in the house. What's going on to G? Uh, we've got John Kane, 46, in the place. Uh, we, I'm not going to say that disgusting name. we got Get Frisky in the house, Cruise Dresser, uh, Eric Ghost, Ghostkiner, uh, all right, that's enough. That's it. That's, I've, had enough. I've had enough. That's enough freaking Twitter shout-outs. All I see is it's underwater Texas, swimming Texas, aquatic Texas. That's all I keep seeing, and I don't want to say them, so screw you. I'm not letting you people ruin my Baller Friday. I am not going to let you people ruin my Baller Friday. Do you understand that, boy? So anyway, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and continue taking callers here. All you have to do is give me a call, 516-453-9903. It's a Friday the 13th, Baller Friday edition, free format, True Capitalist Radio. Let's go ahead and take some calls, shall we? Uh, who else do we got? We got 248. What do you want to talk about? Yeah, uh, I was. What a, I have a question about the capitalism and, like, the uh, lawn care and like cleaning homes and whatnot kind of like a maid's job but you get paid really a lot by you know rich people rich people pay you a lot of money like thirty dollars forty dollars an hour all you got to work is like five hours and you get already two hundred dollars and i have a job i work with this lady from far michigan and uh, she makes me put on a french maid costume and uh, she just stares at me with a bulge in my pants <sighs> yeah, real, real funny, real funny. I mean, give me a break. Uh, but to be honest with you, uh, to go with what you were suggesting, uh, cleaning, believe it or not, is a booming business. And the reason it's a booming business is because capitalists, with all due respect, uh, if they're a true capitalist that's always on the go hustling, making sure that they have more and more money every day in their pockets – uh, you know, the cleaning industry is a lucrative business if you have the labor to exchange and uh, have the appropriate marketing sil- skill set to obtain the customer base. And the reason I'm saying this is not too many people have enough time to clean their own homes or clean their offices. You know, uh, you know, they don't have time. They don't have time. There's not enough time in the day. So anyway, you sound like a fruit bowl anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if you're, you know, cleaning the floor with your tongue, you sick-ass little fruit bowl. Uh, we got area code 606. What do you want to talk about? All right. Well, let's go to another caller. How about 708? What do you want to talk about? Hey, what's up? It's G. I just wanted to say happy Baller Friday, man, the 13th. And uh, uh, let's go Trump, man. we, we got to have the country get good, man. I agree with you on that, man. Thank you for the encouraging words. And we definitely need to make the damn country better again. And uh, that's what makes Donald Trump's candidacy so important. 
And that's why I'm encouraging everybody within the sound of my voice, please, please go out there and spread the word about this man, spread information, spread the appropriate news articles necessary to convince as many people as you possibly can to vote for Donald Trump this election so that the capitalists who have now taken complete and total control of the GOP can take control of the White House, boy. <laughs> Woo! I'm telling you, it'll be a great day, a great goddamn day in American history when the capitalists finally take control of the damn White House, boy. And we're ready, boy. We're ready. <laughs> anyway, let's see who else we got here. Area code 337. What do you want to talk about? Hey, Ghost. I was talking to my boy. His name was Bubba Zanetti. And we kind of got into the discussion about the flight in Puerto Rico about how it's currently in a money pit. And we believe that Trump, with all of his grandeur and everything, could definitely help out when it comes to our flight over there of our people. Now listen, they don't tell you this on the news, but there's a guy there that Hillary's working with to ruin our con- our little island. <coughs> his name is Yamazaki. He's like a real snake, and he's always laughing at us and everything. I just want to let you know. I want to let the capitalist army know about that. Thanks, brother. Hey, I appreciate it. Uh, Well, I do agree that uh, there is a tremendous debt situation in Puerto Rico, and I do agree that uh, there are outside influences wanting to make sure that Puerto Rico is a default, defunct nation. Uh, much like every one, all these other nations that are continuously spending money on all kinds of different supposed services, and yet if you take a look at Puerto Rico, with all due respect, I mean, they could use a little bit of infrastructure work. So where that death went to, I have no goddamn idea. But I definitely believe that Donald Trump could help Puerto Rico and all the other uh, extended uh, offshoots of uh, of America, you know, the uh, – I don't know what do you what do you call those countries that are offshoots of the uh, of America? I forgot what you call them, but uh, we, you know Guam and you know these, these types of uh, I forgot. Anyway, uh, I definitely believe that he could definitely help the situation on a fiscal level, not just in Puerto Rico, but also in a in America. In America, for Christ's sake, we need a businessman. We need a capitalist to get a hold of these taxes. They get get a hold of this purse. Get a hold of this debt, and start. You know, restructuring it. I mean, and look, when the media suggests to you that uh, Donald Trump is going to default on the debt to use that as leverage to renegotiate the creditors, that's just utter crap. All right, that's not what he's going to do. He's going to refinance the debt, meaning he's going to buy it back from the people that are holding, uh, that, that are actually currently holding bonds, buy it back. During the refinancing, now, during that buyback session, because those bonds aren't fully matured, a lot of these are 10, 20-year notes, plus uh, uh, they, they haven't matured as of late, so they are going to have to take some level of a cut as it relates to their uh, return on these bonds. Now, What's beneficial about this and what Trump knows is that when you capitalize on a bond, the taxes on that are zero. I mean, literally, there's no capital gains tax on profits generated through municipal bonds, through government bonds. And, of course, there's reasoning behind that, folks. All right, they want you to hold on to that debt. I mean, a lot of these bonds are for years, you know, 10-plus years. And that's what Donald Trump knows. Donald Trump knows that he can go to these bondholders. He could probably gather the capital necessary to be able to refinance the entire debt. He doesn't even need to refinance the entire debt. He just needs to refinance a a good portion of it so that that portion can be more of a long-term debt, per se, as it relates to uh, generating interest. Like, yeah, okay, there's more interest to the new bondholders in the long run. But in the short term, the option of paying on the principal of that debt is going to be a lot easier than the current debt structure that we have with the bondholders at this point in time. And Trump knows this, all right? And that's what these economists are – they don't understand. They're like, what? I don't get it. I I didn't read this in a book. 
I don't get it. I've never heard of this. I didn't read this in a book. Of course you did it, you stupid economist idiot. That's because capitalists, we're, we understand finance. You understand that? You're making money, baby. That's what we do. That's what we live for. And that's why I'm saying, folks, that's why this man, Donald Trump, knows business. All right? He refinances the debt. He gets it at a lower interest rate for a longer term for the people that are going to take on the debt. And I believe that he can raise the money via outside capital influence. He can go on a diplomacy tour and try to get uh, other countries to take on more of the debt. He can take call some of his buddies in the uh, venture capitalist firms, in the, uh, uh, in the private sector, some of these multinationals to take on some of this debt, hold some of these bonds. And, you know, that's what he's talking about when he says he's going to renegotiate the debt. He's going to be able to say, hey, look, I've got about $10 trillion that I'm going to buy back from individuals who want to cash out now at this percentage rate, which will probably be a lot more generous than the actual mature rate if they were to hold on to the bond. And the reason that he'll do that is because, first of all, people are going to want to relinquish those bonds if they're going to get a uh, interest rate that's higher than the return if they were to hold uh, the bond to maturity. So when that happens, this man can either uh, refinance the debt and then reissue it with a longer-term interest rate so that this man can act, or not this man, but this country, us, the taxpayer, we can finally pay on the principle of the debt so we can pay down the debt instead of just paying on the interest. You see, folks, we're losing tax money as we lose people who are in the employment sector, as we lose mom-and-pop shop businesses. We are losing tax revenue. And because of that, the taxes that are generated every year of all of America, from all of America, can barely pay the interest on the national debt that we have on our books. That's why you've got Janet Yellen talking about implementing negative interest rates in America. Negative interest rates. I never thought I'd hear of such a thing. That means, folks, that your little direct deposit paycheck that goes right into the bank account. Well, if you leave that for more than, I don't know, I guess it's a month. I don't know how they're going to basically charge interest on you, but they're going to charge you interest for them holding your own money. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, I don't understand it. They're going to charge you interest so that they can hold your money. They have already implemented this strategy in Europe, folks. So please do not think that this is a pipe dream. Janet Yellen just talked about it today. Jesus Christ, I'm serious, man. Anyway, let me move on to another couple of callers here. Uh, this is a Baller Friday, Friday the 13th edition, free format of the True Capitalist Radio Show. Uh, I want to hear from you. Let's see yeah, who else has something to say. All right, I mean, I want to hear from you. We're going to discuss whatever it is that you want to discuss on this broadcast. That's what's so beautiful about the free format edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. And, of course, folks, if it is busy, uh, go ahead and keep on uh, trying, folks. I mean, we got a lot of people calling in. Everybody wants to, you know, partake in the True Capitalist Radio free format. So go ahead and keep trying, if you will. Uh, and if you want to be called on, you got to push the number one, folks. If you're holding on, I don't know if you actually want to be called on. If you do not push the number one, and, uh, you know, that signifies to yours truly and the engineer that uh, you actually want to be called on as it relates to the broadcast that you're currently listening to right at this current time. All right, folks, uh, let's take another caller here so that, uh, you know, we can continue on with the broadcast, shall we? Uh, we've got area code eight three two. What do you want to talk about? Hey, Ghost, how's it going? Uh, as we speak right now, it's fucking thundering outside of Houston. Uh, just enjoying a St. Arnold's beer on this Baller Friday. Short time listener, keep it up. You're doing a great job. It's a lot of fun listening to you. Also, quickly, what do you think it'll take for these never Trump assholes, these cruise jackoffs, 
to kind of switch switch over to our side of things. They've got. I feel like they've gone so far right. They're to the left now. Oh, you know, that's a very good observation. I think they've gone so far right there to the left now is right. And uh, take cover out there in Houston. I know Houston has been getting a lot of floods, man, so take cover. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, it's just another gradual rain and not anything hailing, no flooding or any kind of uh, uh, tornadic activity. And uh, cheers to you as well. Uh, But, yeah, once again, I don't know what the hell has happened to these uh, cruise crew uh, from what I understand, the reports are coming out here at the Texas Convention that the cruise crew out here in Texas is falling in line. Uh, they're willing to fall in line with the Trump train. Uh, they have succumbed to the fact that Trump is the overwhelming GOP nominee. Uh, there's no way they can continue to try to rig this voterless election nonsense that, uh, that Ted Cruz was trying to pull. And uh, at this point in time, I mean, I can see from, you know, the reports coming out of the Texas convention that they are falling in line with the Trump train. Now, I'm talking about other cruise crew people from across the country. I have no goddamn idea. All right. I have no goddamn idea what their problem is. I mean, they're so right they've turned left is right. I mean, I'm serious, man. I mean, just look at how they tried to justify the voterless election wins of one Ted Cruz. Just look at how they tried to justify this man's philanderous affairs. Just take a look at how they've tried to justify this man's lying, 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 and continuous lying, for Christ's sake. Look at how they tried to justify this man's political unscrupulous tactics with Ben Carson and robocalls and all this other nonsense. So I agree with you. I have no idea what the hell is going to happen with the cruise crew. That's why, in my personal opinion, that's why these Republican establishment people, that's why the evangelicals are poo-pooing right now, because the Trump train and the capitalist revolution is way bigger than the Republican Party. It's way bigger than the evangelicals. It's way bigger than the conservatives. You understand that? I mean, the capitalist revolution that is being led by Trump is bringing on millions of other voters that would have never, never voted Republican that are going to vote Republican this presidential cycle because of Donald Trump. Do you understand that? And at some point in time, I personally believe that the Republican Party is going to be synonymous with capitalism. That's right. That's going to be the fundamental platform of being a Republican at this point in time. No longer about these red herring issues about bathrooms and about, you know, uh, marriages and abortions and all this other stuff. I mean, not to say that those issues are not important. But, folks, at this point in time, there are a lot more important issues to be discussing, especially as it relates to economics, folks. And that's what Donald Trump understands. It's all about economics. And when everybody is out working, when everybody has a job, when everybody is prosperous and being able to carve out their own destiny, that's when we start seeing the Americana that we have come to love, that created this country, that made us the bastion of capitalism at one point in time. And we will be that again, folks. That's why I'm saying Donald Trump's nomination, Donald Trump's candidacy, and Donald Trump's presidency is that damn important. I'm telling you, this Trump train, this capitalist revolution is way bigger than the goddamn Republican Party. Way bigger than the Republican Party. And that's why I'm saying, folks, the capitalists, we've taken control of the GOP. We have taken control of the GOP, folks. Mark my word. And that's why you got these damn bureaucrats scared shitless. Excuse my French, but that's why they're scared crapless. They're scared, and I don't blame them, boy. I don't blame them. Anyway, let's take a couple more calls, and then we'll move on to radio graffiti here. 516-453-9903. I want to hear from you. Baller Friday, the 13th edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show, free format. Let's take some more calls, shall we? 404, what do you want to talk about? Ghost, um, I've been doing some research, and you know how you said that 
politicians can take their campaign contributions account and put them into their personal account. I haven't found any information on that. However, I have found information that they can take their campaign contributions and turn them into a PAC. And, uh, I mean, clearly that could be used as a slush fund like the Clinton Foundation right now. But, um, yeah, that's something I, that I've been thinking about a lot lately. Well, uh, you know, uh, you should ask your uh, professor in political science because uh, that's what they're teaching in political science. Moreover, it has been known throughout the ages of politics that once a politician – they have to retire from politics altogether – they cannot, like, for instance, uh, be voted out of office and then ha- have ambitions uh, to run for office within the near five to ten year future. All right. I mean, these are politicians when they completely retire from office, from uh, their uh, uh, political endeavors, whatever they have left in their campaign contribution accounts, they can completely just put it in to their personal bank account. Now, of course, you are finding that they can put it into PACs and super PACs, and just as you've suggested, it's much like the Clinton Foundation and the nonprofit schemes that you've come to know and love out here as it relates to uh, any tragedy that happens. Haven't you noticed that, folks? Every time there's a tragedy that happens, there's always a nonprofit organization that raises all kinds of millions and tens of millions uh, in the Haiti situation, hundreds of millions. Where did all that money go? I mean, all the money that was raised for Haiti during that uh, earthquake, where did it all go? How come it didn't build skyscrapers in Haiti for the amount of money that we freaking uh, donated out here? I'm telling you, it's a scam. I don't donate one red cent to nonprofit organizations, folks. Not one red cent. If I'm going to give out my money, I'm going to give it out to people that I know or that, that I know that are in a genuine bad situation or in tough times and that I can witness from my own self, not somebody who's like – I mean, haven't you noticed that also, folks, when you freaking talk to somebody in any social situation, they're always talking to you about their freaking problems like you care? Hey, everybody's got problems, all right? I mean, if you find yourself one of these individuals that when you're in a social setting – and you're talking to somebody, and you're talking about your problems, then you're the problem, all right? You're the goddamn problem. But once again, folks, uh, I'm kidding you not. You can find this out for yourself. These politicians can take all the money that they have accumulated, their campaign contribution account, once they are no longer in office, once they are retired from politics, They can put it in their personal bank account or, obviously, put it in a super PAC, a nonprofit organization, a scholarship, any kind of little slush fund where it can justify expenditures. You know, I mean, that's really what the Clinton Foundation is all about, if you want my opinion. I mean, it's to uh, flip the tab for private Learjets, to flip the tab for, you know, five-star hotels, to flip the tab for, you know, uh, badass uh, steakhouse meals. Uh, you know, and of course, you know, inflated salaries, uh, you know, for everyone who is involved in that particular sleazebag nonprofit organization. So once again, anyway, let's take a, a Skype caller and we'll take one more caller and then we'll move on to Radio Graffiti. Uh, Radiant Snake, what's going on? What do you want to talk about? Hey, Ghost, long time no see. Thanks. appreciate the tweet, retweets recently. I, I just want just want to ask a quick question. Um, what's your thoughts on the free T trade agreements? You know, the TPP, the TISA, and the TTIP. Well, those uh, particular agreements, uh, I, I mean, I am against. I'm against any trade agreements uh, that affect the manufacturing base of the country. Uh, NAFTA, which was the last uh, trade agreement, which was the North American Free Trade Agreement with uh, Mexico and South America, literally has dismantled uh, the manufacturing in America, the production in America. And I think that what uh, TPP uh, and and all those other agreements uh, that you just uh, commented on, what they do is take out the white-collar jobs away from America and outship those into the Asian uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, the Asian Pacific uh, region, so on and so forth. So, 
In my personal opinion, I am completely against it. Moreover, we don't even know what's in the agreement. You know, and that's what makes this so frustrating for the American people, that you've got these international bureaucrats signing international agreements in the name of the American people, and we are not even privy to see the damn documents that these people are signing our names to. All right, I'm completely against it. I'm a completely, I was against NAFTA, all right? And the reason I'm, I'm against it is because, folks, these trade agreements aren't equal. All right. I mean, we buy everything. They buy nothing from us. I mean, that's the way it is on an international scale. Nobody buys anything from America anymore. We're the consumption hole. That's where all this goddamn debt is coming from. I mean, we produce. We have a lot of natural resources, for Christ's sake, but guess what? We're not utilizing them properly. We're not tapping into the entrepreneurial spirit of this country. We're not making it an incentivized business culture in this country all right i mean just take a look at the regulations take a look at the tax systems you know take a look at the protected monopolies in this country that is what's prohibiting economic opportunity for everybody and that's what makes donald trump's candidacy once again so important this man is a capitalist and he's going to open up the country and i'm quoting him he's going to open up the country to new capitalists and that's exactly what america needs that's why I'm trying to encourage capitalists now, and moreover, trying to encourage people to go out and vote for Donald Trump. Because let me tell you, you have time now. If Donald Trump is elected and you become a capitalist, you can become a success within this man's tenure as president. You can become a success. You can carve out your own destiny. I'm not kidding around. I mean, all this man needs to do is to basically restructure debt, renegotiate trade deals, Force these damn countries that we're protecting with our military and our expenditures to start paying us, all right? Start chopping up this goddamn bureaucracy, all right? Cutting spending, all right? Go after fraud, waste, and abuse, all right? And then uh, just cut taxes and bring the $1.25 trillion that's offshore uh, that is being held by multinational American corporations. Have them bring that into the country at a very inexpensive rate so that they can reinvest in America, bring back the machines of production, bring back manufacturing in this country so that we can start producing products that we can sell on the international market because we aren't producing dick. And T, uh, TPP, TPIP, TIA, all those, all those stupid, ridiculous freaking agreements – I am against them, and every American should be against them, because, look, NAFTA took away the manufacturing production jobs, uh, the TPP, TPIP, whatever the hell there are. Those goddamn agreements are going to take away the white-collar IT jobs, programming jobs, all the jobs that are in Silicon Valley, so on and so forth. If you don't believe me, you just wait and see. Anyway, thank you very much, Raiden Snake. I really appreciate your call here. Uh, let me take one more call, and then we're going to go ahead and move on to Radio Graffiti. Uh, once again, uh, let me go ahead and see. I'm trying to look here. Uh, I don't recognize any of the. Oh, there's the Teutonic Plague. What's going on, Teutonic Plague? How you doing, man? Hey, Ghost. Happy Bowler Friday. What's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey, you sound a little blue. What's going on, man? Uh, it's been a hectic day, and... I'm trying to move out of my dorm, but uh, there was it was just one. Yeah, Friday the 13th. I know Friday the 13th. Bad luck, <laughs> but still, man. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, you know, it's just a moving day, kind of hectic. Uh, you know, pain in the ass kind of thing. Yeah, but there is something I'd like to discuss. I do have a subject. All right, go ahead, too. man. Go right ahead. So I got this friend, right? And her name's Liz. Really good friend of mine, and. I told her about you, and she and uh, she's unfortunately a liberal. She's voting for Bernie. Oh, jeez. And some, you know, I told her, hey, why don't you give Ghost a call? I'll give you his number, or I'll call him next time we get together. And if it's uh, time for the show, you can uh, chime in. And she says, oh, he sounds crazy. But, uh, you know, I really want her to chime in so you and her can have a debate. 
All right. Well, did you did you tell her or what? Yeah, I told her, and um, she says if Bernie doesn't get uh, get the nomination, she's voting for Hillary. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about Benghazi? And she's like, oh, oh, she did nothing wrong there. She did nothing wrong. Oh my God, that typical liberal man. Typical liberal. You, you're yeah. witnessing it firsthand, right? Yep. Unreal, man. Hey, hey, uh, keep your head up there, Teutonic Plague. I know that, uh, you know, you may be uh, a little blue, uh, you know, you may be, uh, you know, kind of uh, be a little pissed off. Moving day sucks for everybody. Let's just put it that way, all right? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, seriously, you know, you know when somebody has been moving just by the way they look and how disheveled they are. So keep your head up there, Teutonic Plague. Anyway... Let's go ahead and move it on to everybody's favorite part of the broadcast, folks. And I'm talking about Radio Graffiti. <laughs> That's right, folks. Radio Graffiti, the part of the broadcast where the spectators become a part of the spectacle. All you have to do is give me a call right now at 516-453-9903. And when I call on your area code or on your Skype name, you have exactly three to four seconds to say whatever it is that's on your mind. Just as long as you're not a Helen Keller deaf mute, for Christ's sake, all right? Jesus Christ. And before we get to our first radio graffiti call, I'd like to remind everybody to please spread it around like wildfire that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, and we are live every 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the address. Blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And, of course, folks, if you haven't already done so, please follow me on Twitter. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one word, no underscores, baby. Politics Ghost. And I do want to say thanks to everybody who's following me. We are well beyond 5,000 followers. And I want to thank the people that who congratulated me. Hey, this is just the beginning, baby. All right? This is just the beginning. <laughs> Woo! Anyway, make sure to spread the word like wildfire that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, baby, all right? All kinds of little buttons right next to the player right in front of you right there. Facebook like buttons, retweet this buttons, social media buttons. Use and abuse those buttons, baby, all right? It's just a freaking click, asshole! Anyway, let's go ahead and get to Radio Graffiti right now! 949 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, it actually has a specimen I wanted to talk about. All right, well, what do you want to talk about? I actually have a problem with some of these immigrants who come into our country. I understand they want a better way of life, but can they at least take the time to learn the freaking language? And keep me on the line, by the way. I agree. Uh, they need to learn the language. They need to assimilate it. Moreover, uh, English is the language of business, so if you want to succeed in business, you have to know English. It's unfortunate. Even the Chinese are teaching their uh, their students English in China. All right, FYI. Uh, 210 Radio Graffiti. Geico presents sharing versus oversharing. Earlier this week, Claire Tippins shared a princess nickname generator, three pictures of her dog wearing a tutu, and two online quizzes, including what candy is your dream castle made of? Claire, your sharing has tipped the sugar scale and turned into oversharing. But have no fear, princess. Geico has something worth sharing with your internet kingdom, like how you can save hundreds on your car insurance just by visiting geico.com. No magic wand required. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Christ, another splicer for Christ's sake. Pivot idiot, radio graffiti. You got my dick. I want to take it to my dick. Maybe we can my dick. Maybe together we can my dick. And if my dick is better, started from my dick, got nothing to lose. Maybe my dick for me, myself. Jesus Christ, there's that idiot that's obsessed with his freaking penis, for Christ's sake. Good God, 717 radio graffiti. If I can take more than one man at a time, well, I can pound a living big Jesus out of my two or three homosexuals, all right? 
What I do is I look for... Shut up! I never said that! That's a splice! Shut up! 781 Radio Graffiti. Put the legs on the shoulders. It's true. It was, uh, it was football class. Football and league class. You know, number one class. And I basically wrote the motorcycle right to a girl's pussy. She came in fairly obviously. Dude. Probably usually told me she takes to her first before the motorcycle. Did you ever, basically, uh, the teacher said, I did, I award you with five weeks because you've been such a fucking poopy you know? I, I don't even know what the hell that's about. 813 Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Competition for True Capitalist Penis. Uh, we got 954 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. Briefly, a few episodes ago, you mentioned you were a big fan of film. So, real quick, I'd like to know your five favorite films. Oh, man, that's that's putting me on the spot, man. I I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I tell you what I will do. Uh, is come uh, this next week, or probably the next Baller Friday, I'll suggest films uh, for the Baller Friday free format edition, all right? I'll, I'll suggest a film. I'll do a small film review or something of that nature. And I, I really am a, a big fan of film. I'm just not a big fan of Hollywood-produced garbage. I'm actually more of an indie flick kind of an individual, and uh, I am more than willing to go out and see indie flicks. I'm out here in Austin, Texas. They're always produced. I really appreciate them. Uh, it is great talent to see. So, yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll do that, man. Thanks for the suggestion. Uh, who else do we got here? Uh, 727, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, have you uh, collected your disability check this month? Yeah, shut up, you idiot. I don't collect disability, you freaking moron. 630, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> hey, Ghost, I want you to have a baller Friday and shout out to Astro and to Die Plague. Hey, thank you very much, man. Happy Baller Friday, the 13th to you, too, my friend. 708 Radio Graffiti. Hey, man, I just want to, it's G again. I want to give a shout-out for Tutak Flick and make sure Jason Voorhees doesn't get after you because it's, uh, it's uh, Friday the 13th and whatnot, the jokes of the horror movie. Hey, no problem, man. Thank you very much for calling in. Uh, Radio Graffiti, 616. Hey, Carlos, I got some bad news. Uh, Goofy Bone got fired from his job at Taco Bell and is back in the radio business. Yeah, well, who cares? 407 Radio Graffiti. In honor of the wildfires up north, I'm drinking some Canada Dry. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that's, that's just freaking horrible, you ass clown. Freaking horrible. Jesus Christ. Uh, who else do we got here? Uh, Critical Sands Radio Graffiti. Get down to business to defeat the trolls. I needed some Texans, but I got RuPaul's. You're all stupid, sorry, sacks of crap. And stop calling me a Jew. Looks like I'll make a capitalist out of you. You must be racist as a grand dragon. Watch MLP every Saturday. With as much skirt as a greasy ham bone. Reporting is hearing the sound of cans. Dot way. All right, that's enough. That's it, for Christ's sake. That's enough. Your screwy little fruit bowl songs about me and my show, for Christ's sake. Show up, your fruit bowl asses, all of you. Son of a bitch. 615 Radio Goddamn Graffiti. Ghost takes his shit out of his mouth. And I think that's trying to tell us that we are all oh, Shut up, you stupid moron. Uh, we got Simply X Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Prepare to be divergenized. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, that sick ass splice. 909 Radio Graffiti. 
Hey, Ghost, um, I just want to say that don't worry about the trolls. I mean, we're not all born perfect. I mean, if we were, we'd all be in wheelchairs. You son of a bitch, you stupid, dumb broad. Go in the kitchen and make me a sandwich with that talk. 781 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, Jesus Christ, what the hell is that crap? Come on now. We got Richard Clinton, Radio Graffiti. I think that if you want my personal opinion, I think Donald Trump should have my man, Barack Obama, as a damn vice presidential candidate. Oh, show it up your ass. No way. Don't put me in a, a freaking splice praising this freaking Barack Obama. Do not do that, you son of a bitch. Do not do that. Jesus Christ. Once again, you are listening to Radio Graffiti on True Capitalist Radio on this Polar Friday, Friday the 13th edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. 516-453-9903 is the number to call if you want to partake in Radio Graffiti right now. We're going to continue on. We got any more callers, Engineer? All right, we got a couple more callers here. 518, Radio Graffiti. Quickly, hear the man they call Coastler. Jesus Christ, what, what, what are you, are you singing that with a vibrator in your shit funnel, for Christ's sake? Uh, Dark Sword, Radio Graffiti. Hello, I'm Johnny Rebel. For a long time, we've listened to these niggas pitch a fit about their hard times and civil rights. Well, ain't that the pit? So I think I'll take me an imaginary trip and try to be a nigger for a day. If I could be a nigger for a day, I could live my life the free and easy way. I take from up the sale and let the white man pay. If I could be a nigger for a day. Oh, that- Jesus, that's horrible. That's just horrible, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ with that racist garbage. Good God. 949 Radio Graffiti. Oh, you did call on me. Keep me on the line. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, here, uh, take your hand down. Take the one off. Push one again or something. Get your hand down. Uh, American Truck Simulator Radio Graffiti. And all you assholes that say that I'm a freaking transgendered individual. Hey, it's the truth. Uh, shut up your ass with that splice, all right? Look, I'm just trying to kick some modern-day philosophy in this socially engineered warped landscape that we call America, all right, boy? Jesus Christ. A real black guy, radio graffiti. Look, I'm telling you right now. I molested a whole bunch of shot of trap. No, I'm sh- shut, shut up, shut up, shut up with that talk. All right, I never said that. That's a ridiculous splice. I don't appreciate those splices, boy. Baltimore trucker, radio graffiti. You son of a bitch! You goddamn splicer, son of a bitch! Stop it! Just stop it now! Stop the splices! Just stop them! Stop it! Jesus Christ! 732 Radio Graffiti. (laughs) Jesus Christ. How about Nintendo Wii Chair? Radio 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 Graffiti. You get besmirched. You get trolled. This is the internet public right here. This is the goddamn internet public. The soulless, perverted internet. I really don't appreciate you idiots making me sound like half a tard. For Christ's sake, all right? Stop it. Just stop it with the splices already. Just stop. Bill, 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 Radio Graffiti, damn it. It's raining too much out here. It's raining too much. Don't you soulless freaks understand that? Good God. Look, stop making me sound like half a t- 
hard out here. Stop it. Jesus Christ. 248 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, I don't appreciate what you said to me last time. If I come to your house, I'm going to beat your ass. I'm going to bang your wife. I'm going to beat oh, your dog. shut up. Are you kidding me, for Christ's sake? You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops. Do you hear your voice? Why don't you record yourself and then hear yourself talking and then see if you're going to be intimidated by that. I mean, seriously, do you hear? Oh, you know what I'm going to do, Ghost? I'm going to go to your house and, you know, I'm going to you to show me your toolbox. Let me see your toolbox. You go, <laughs> shut up. Just shut your stupid, fruity little dumb ass up. Five four zero radio graffiti. I want to call on the capitalist army to make some art of Huma and Hillary. Rule thirty four. I'd love to see that. Oh man, no kidding. How about college liberal radio graffiti? Once again, I want a Mexican cock taking meat in the can. That's on the freaking. Hey, hey, shut up! I never said that. Shut up! Shut up with those sick ass splices, man. Cave Johnson, radio graffiti. Jesus Christ, I just said that! I just freaking said that, for Christ's sake! Stop it with this stuff! Stop it! Good God! Jesus Christ, 609 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, your wife who is shit. Yeah, well that, that that's you waited an hour to say that you stupid moron what a freaking loser uh how about 716 radio graffiti mm. just put your mouth on me mm. Mm. just put your mouth on me mm. what the hell is up with you and you people obsessed with you <laughs> Yeah, oh, Jesus Christ. You must have went into the freaking archive for that one. Good Lord. 586 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, you're playing with your goddamn Peter Popper. Jesus Christ, Radio Graffiti. All right, kill your milk, all right? Slip that noose, all right? Bring your stuff in the mouth, all right? Mix it up, we'll get the and drink it, all right? Jesus Christ, with these remixes, too, on top of that. I'm sick of these remixes. Cosmo Brockington, Radio Graffiti. Still have computers and Internet connections and all these stupid little Chinese-made technological gadgets, but they can't even buy themselves a damn toilet. They can't even buy themselves a damn toilet. And what are they doing? They're watching their little plasma screen TV. They're watching their stupid little computer, and they're crapping, and they're shitting. They're taking a dirty diarrhea shit and piss every time they eat everywhere they eat because they don't want to buy a toilet. They don't want to buy a toilet. They don't want to buy a freaking toilet. Man, you're, you're going back into the archives. That sounds like the true conservative days, baby. And, of course, you know, you can go back in the archive and get every uh, episode that I ever broadcasted here. Anyway, let's take some more callers here. Big American Patriot, Radio Graffiti. And all you assholes that say that I'm a freaking goddamn Aspie, autistic, retarded Elmer Fudd, piece of crap. Hey, it's the truth. <laughs> Shove it up your ass, for Christ's sake, all right? Shove it up your ass, manhandler, Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ. How about Raiden Snake Radio Graffiti? Hey, Ghost. Shout out to you and thanks for earlier. Shout out to everyone in the United Kingdom and also shout out to Karaskin. All right. How about uh, Teutonic Plague Radio Graffiti, man? Crossing the state line to help with my business. Meeting a guy in Los Angeles. The place wears a mask because the sunset is gorgeous. Disguising the facts that people are thieves. The IRS takes half your pay. Just to throw it away on losers and ham bones and ghetto fight fat girls collecting the government cheese. It's junkyard America. 
Dish Rag America, Fruit Bowl America, hell yeah. Happy Bowler Friday, Ghost. Hey, thanks a lot, Teutonic Play. He's going back old school in the archives, too, man. That was a uh, song written by uh, Electric Feds for the True Capitalist Radio Show. Wonder what happened to that old chap. 615 Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ. Steve Burnish, Radio Graffiti. It's underwater Texas, swimming Texas, aquatic Texas, it's underwater Texas, swimming Texas, aquatic Texas, it's under- God damn it, stop it! Stop it with the mid-show splices already, you sons of bitches! You goddamn sons of bitches, for Christ's sake! Good God, look, we're already heading down to the final minute of the live broadcast, folks. All right, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with a little bit of the post-show edition of the True Capitalist Radio Show. All you have to do to tune in is to give me a call right now at 516-453-9903, or you can uh, hear it on the podcast as soon as we're done at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And if you haven't already done so, folks, please follow me on Twitter. The Twitter name to follow is Politics Ghost. All one word, no underscores, Politics Ghost. Anyway, folks, it's been a great baller Friday the 13th. Cheers to everybody out there who's basking in their week success. Once again, I will be back Monday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Follow me on Twitter, Politics Ghost. Long live the capitalist army, baby, and happy Baller Friday! <laughs> All right, now we are uh, off the official live broadcast, and now we are being exclusively broadcasted to those that are listening to us on the phone or that are listening to us via the podcast. All right, now, once again, folks, I want to thank those of you that are listening to us via podcast. I want to thank you for your patronage. Uh, Once again, the whole reason why I have a post-show third-hour edition is – exclusively for you guys because i know i have a big huge contingent of people that actually listen to the show in the archive through podcasts there's not a lot of people that uh well there's obviously a lot of people i got about fifty thousand live listeners on average but there's not enough people that wish they were available to partake in the live festivities because they have pre-existing engagements such as work such as uh, you know other daily activities so on and so forth so once again i do this third hour exclusively for the individuals that listen to the podcast and before i get into anything else i want to say cheers to those individuals that are listening to us via the podcast cheers <laughs> Woo! And once again, folks, you can go as far back in the archive as you want. Every episode that yours truly has ever conducted is, you know, there to download free at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. I have done shows since 2008. We're approaching on almost 500 shows, folks. So there are lots of content that you can listen to. Uh, it's easily streamed. You can stream it right to you, or you can actually download, physically download the podcast by clicking that little icon that's by the player that looks like a cloud with an arrow pointing down on it. You can go ahead and download the podcast via that way as well. Anyway, folks, I'm going to continue on. Uh, once again, uh, we're going to you know do some radio graffiti until we can no longer do radio graffiti any longer. If you want to partake in radio graffiti, push one right now on your phone so I know that you are a participant and not just pit- playing with your Peter Popper. And uh, we'll go ahead and get to some radio graffiti right now. <laughs> All right, Templeton Sanders, radio graffiti. Hit the box, please. Jesus Christ. 
Christ. What kind of a splice is that? What kind of a freaking remix is that, for Christ's sake? 425 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost. I just wanted to stop for one second and uh, bring attention to something very important. Just yesterday it was released. It's a documentary about Brexit. It's called Brexit the Movie on Vimeo. I think everyone should watch it because if, you know, England doesn't get out of the EU, they are fucked. Anyway, thanks for the great show, and I'll talk to you later. Hey, I appreciate it. As a matter of fact, I think everybody should not only watch that documentary, but uh, be well-rounded on the EU and the Brexit and the referendum vote that's happening in Britannia as it relates to them leaving the EU, which I am strongly encouraging everybody in Britannia to vote. Vote to leave the the European Union, all right? Don't let these bureaucrats scare you, for Christ's sake, all right? They're filthy. They're disgusting. They're international bureaucrats. And let me tell you, Britannia, you're better than this. You're better than these stupid, disgusting, filthy, silly bureaucrats. These soulless bureaucrats. Anyway, who else do we got here? 410 Radio Graffiti. It will be legal in Texas to shoot Nazis. Jesus Christ, that's a horrible splice, all right? Horrible. Half Speed Coast, Radio Graffiti. Texas liquidity market, yeah, real quick. Shove it up your ass. Shove it up your goddamn ass. God. You know, I really don't appreciate you sons of bitches. Hey, shut up, get him off the line, engineer, God damn it. I don't appreciate you sons of bitches trying to make me sound like half a goddamn tart or some crap. You know what I mean? Like like I've been dropped in my head a couple of times by mommy when I was like, you know, one or two years old. Like I'm sloth from freaking Goonies or something of that nature, all right? Cut it out already. Cut it the hell out. Cut it out. Anyway, who else do we got? The public, uh, People's Republic of China, Radio Graffiti. Engineer, if you're a grill, is the grill metal pierce from the heavens. Get a grill break. Altered my route space. Who's the hell do you think I am? My grill is the grill metal created from the heavens. Well, what the hell? What the hell kind of a freaking remix splice? What the hell kind of crap was that? What in the hell was that? Jesus Christ. Once again, you're tuning in to. The Friday the 13th, Baller Friday post-show edition of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. Once again, folks, follow me on Twitter. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. Let's continue going, shall we? 248 Radio Graffiti. Ghost, if I saw you in a bar room, I'd hit you over with a bottle because you're a midget. I want to kick your ass because you're so bald. Oh, what? yeah, right, boy. Are you kidding me? Uh, all I'd have to do is step on your little fruity, little, you know, fruity McFaggy ass and then clean the freaking rest of you from the waffle of my boot, boy. All right? Go over there, fruity McShort shirt. Nobody gives a crap. Stupid fruit bowl. 205, Radio Graffiti. Do you have a booster seat on your wheelchair and uh, maybe some floats for the water? Shove it up your ass. I'm not a cripple, all right? First and foremost, I'm not a cripple. Secondly, I'm not a midget. Jesus Christ. Dick breath. Radio graffiti. Stop it with the mix show splices. Stop it with the mix show splices. Stop it with the mix show splices. Stop it with the mix God damn son of a I'm freaking sick of those splices, man. I'm freaking sick of them. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, I'm a capitalist. And I deserve the respect accorded that title. You understand that, boy? I deserve some respect. Respect my name. Put some respect on my name, boy. All of you, all of you throughout the Internet, you better put some goddamn respect on my name, boy. Do you understand that? I'm warning you. I'm warning all of you troll terrorists, you cyber vermin. You better put some goddamn respect on my name.
goddamn respect on my name, boy. You better put some respect on my name. Jesus Christ. Give me the mic. Give me that Give me that freaking mic. Give me that freaking mic for Christ's sake. You better put some damn respect on my name, boy. 615 Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. 708 Radio Graffiti. Hey, so it's G again. Uh, just wanted to say I love your show, man. Uh, it was a great show uh, this year. Uh, this day, it was awesome. I love the show, man. Uh, hey, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for listening, man. 940 Radio Graffiti. Ghost your race, says your wheelchairs in water, but still to the brim. You shove it up your ass. First of all, I am not a racist. I am a melting pot of friendship, and I want you to amplify that throughout the world and let everybody know that I am a melting pot of friendship, for Christ's sake, all right? I've told you this time and time and time again that I happen to have a whole bunch of friends that happen to be black, all right? I happen to have a whole bunch of friends that happen to be Hispandex. I happen to have a whole bunch of friends that happen to be WAP, Kraut, Mick, Camel Jockey, Oriental. So for you people to sit here and suggest to me that I'm some kind of racist is a false indictment, and I want all of you to stop spreading that slanderous lie, and I'm warning you. I'm warning all of you. You all keep calling me a goddamn racist. I've got two words for your stupid, sorry sacks of crap ass. Punitive damages, baby. Anyway, 269 Radio Graffiti. Hello, Ghost. Uh, this is MLP from the Horse Reich, and we all thank you for putting up with the trolls. Congrats on the 5K Twitter followers, and thanks for the shout-out about the banner on Twitter. Hey, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for listening. And, uh, I, I mean, I don't care where you're listening from. I know that we are relayed all over the Internet. I know that there's a lot of chat rooms uh, as it relates to the live broadcast. And I encourage everybody to make their own chat rooms. All right, make your own chat room. Congregate with each other. You know, let everybody know. All right, broadcast, do whatever, relay it. I don't care. Everybody needs to hear the True Capitalist radio show because I am sparking synapses, and I'm trying to create capitalists throughout the world. And that is my genuine intent as it relates to this broadcast. Moreover, I also want the election of one Donald Trump, the man who has sparked the capitalist revolution in America, to be elected president. Because, by God, if you are a capitalist and this man is elected president, you are going to be generously financially rewarded. I guarantee you. That's why it's so important, if you are a capitalist or an aspiring capitalist, to do whatever it takes to make sure that this man, Donald Trump, is elected president. You need to get off the sidelines and get on the front lines, folks. I'm telling you this right now, even if it's as simple as reposting some news post, all right, Uh, sparking debate and forum posts, going to the chat rooms, doing whatever it takes to try to convince as many people as you possibly can to make sure to go out and vote for Donald Trump. Go out and dismiss the hypocrisy and the lies that are being spread about Donald Trump. All right? I mean, this is this important of an election. That's why I have come back, folks. That's why I am conducting these broadcasts. It is that important, and that's why I need for you all to please take it as important as I am taking it. And I'm telling you, get a blog, uh, get a damn video YouTube channel, try to you know spread information via video, via graphics, via memes, all right, via Facebook post, via Twitter post, whatever the case might be, you, and even if you think that you just have a small sphere of influence within your social media network, believe it or not, that small sphere of influence will actually pay off major dividends if you actually help and spread information. You know, because remember, folks, as I've said time and time again, we are the new media. We are the new media, folks, all right? That's why every time you post a news article, I mean, sure, maybe not everybody's going to read it within your sphere of influence on social media, but enough people will. 
and you can single-handedly shape the consciousness of people that are within your uh, Facebook feed, your Twitter feed, whatever the case might be. Especially if you're a blogger, especially if you're somebody within social media like YouTube that has uh, a wide range of influence where people actually listen. You understand? They actually learn something from you. All right? So once again, folks, I, I am, I'm serious. I'm not kidding around. I would like to uh, please extend my hand to the capitalist army. And those that want to join the capitalist army, all you have to do is just go out and spread the word, spread information, try to convince people to vote for Donald Trump, folks. It's that important. It's a capitalist revolution. I mean, the capitalists have already taken control of the GOP. The party's ours. It belongs to us now. And the bureaucrats can't stand it. But these goddamn stupid, dumb Republican bureaucrats better get used to it, boy. Because not only are the capitalists taking control of the GOP, we're going to take control of the White House. You just wait and see, boy. We're going to take control of the White House. You just wait and see, boy. And I can't wait. It'll be a great day, a great goddamn day in American history when the capitalists take control of the White House, boy. A great goddamn day. Anyway, let's take some more callers for Radio Graffiti, folks. All right. Uh, Mike, 347, Radio Graffiti. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, I'm a capitalist. <sighs> I deserve the respect according to that title. Now, oh, Jesus Christ, here we go again. I just goddamn said that, and you're still making me out to sound like a goddamn tar. You stupid troll terror cyber vermin scumbags. Jesus Christ. True capitalist guitarist, radio graffiti. Hey, guys, what's up? How you doing? Hey, man. Hey, I was... I was... Uh, well, are you, you going to say something? Go ahead. Hello? Hey, I was just wondering, uh, do they make cover rolls for Midget? Oh, you stupid son of a bitch. You come over here with that little fruity-ass voice in front of my face and call me that boy. You beat your ass into dog meat, boy. You understand that? I'd split your nuts between your head to the back of your ass crack. You understand that, you stupid, sorry sack of crap? Anyway, 616 Radio Graffiti. Hey, girls, I'm drawing some Pokemon hentai right now. Should I give Misty a J-Cup or just keep a regular size? Oh, shut up. I don't care what the hell you're doing, you stupid, dumb, cartoon, fetish freak. I don't care. 423 Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Hey, Ghost, great show. Happy Ballot Friday. My mom's husband's gone to Europe for work, and she really wants to meet you and see you throw around your man of dominance. So in nine days, you better be in Dallas at Highland Park Methodist Church to see my grandpa. Oh, well, shut up, you stupid moron, with you and your grandfather, Buzz Aldrin. Buzz off, butter cheeks, with that crap. 630 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Ghost, it's Matt Tony. Happy Ball of Friday. And can I address something to that stupid troll with multiple Skype? Yeah, go right ahead. Homer, you better stop that. That's getting old, you stupid moron. Come with something new. Those one place remixes are getting old. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you for calling. <laughs> You heard him, right? <laughs> oh, okay. All right, I'm sorry, man. You heard him, right? These these one splice in. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's not right, man. I'm sorry. Anyway, you heard him, all right? You heard him. Stop it with the one splice remixes, all right? It's getting old, all right? <laughs> okay, all right. All right, 781 Radio Graffiti. <laughs>
Hi, Ghost. There we go with these damn remixes, for Christ's sake. Good God, man. Take about ten steps away from my freaking butt crack with all these goddamn remixes, for Christ's sake. 606, Radio Graffiti. No, oh, Jesus Christ, you're playing with your goddamn pecker shaft, for Christ's sake. Uh, who else do we got? Uh, 909, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. How about uh, 501 Radio Graffiti? Jesus Christ. This guy's whacking his pecker shaft off watching 60 Minutes or some crap. Uh, 720 Radio Graffiti. Yeah, Gus, we're calling to check and making sure if your hover round has the proper small arm attachments that we sent you. Shove it up your ass with the crippled midget talk, too, man. Shove it up your ass. Son of a bitch. Your mother is a midget. How about that? Your stupid dishrag whore of a mother is a midget, you fruit bowl. 205 Radio Graffiti. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Freaking disgusting, you know that? I know what you idiots are doing. I know that's disgusting music, all right? I'm not even going to make reference to what that song is or what. I mean, it's gross. It's disgusting. You're perverted. You're perverted. Jesus Christ. 818 Radio Graffiti. Hey, Gus. I just want to say that I listen to your show every day, but... I just can't stand it. You know, you trigger me every fucking time. Every fucking time. Hey, 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 Broad, shut up. Shut up. Put a cork in it and get in the goddamn kitchen and make something to eat. What the hell's your goddamn problem? Don't be, don't be mouthing off like that to me. Let me tell you something right now. You're mouthing off to me like that in real life. I'd have to get my goddamn pimp hand strong on your slut bag ass. she be sitting there mouthing off to me like that, boy. Do you understand that? You understand that, woman? Now get in the damn kitchen. Jesus Christ. We got got Boat 073, Radio Graffiti. Hey, Broad, shut up. Shut up. Put a cork in it and get in the goddamn kitchen and make something to eat. What the hell's your goddamn problem? Don't be be mouthing off like that to me. What the hell? I just said that. I just freaking said that. I just freaking...
People are going out there ruining my baller Friday. You're ruining it. You're ruining it for Christ's sake. Each and every one of you cyber vermin pieces of trash. You're ruining it. Son of a bitch. Give me the mic. Give me my mic. Give me the mic. Give me that freaking mic for Christ's sake. I'm telling you, sorry sacks of crap, you're ruining my goddamn baller Friday. You're ruining my goddamn baller Friday! So before you idiots, you goddamn troll terrorists, you cyber vermin, before you start popping off in your stupid, dumb, pop-tart-eating head, thinking that you win, oh, look at me, I won, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to let you win, you idiots. You understand that? I'm not letting you idiots ruin my baller Friday. I'm not letting you idiots ruin my baller Friday. So I'm going to do, I'm going to take a chug here. I'm going to take a chug of a little bit of this Johnny Walker Blue Label. Oh, yeah. Take a little swig of this here on this baller Friday, for Christ's sake. This Friday the 13th baller Friday. It sure as hell makes sense why it's Friday the 13th. I mean, good God with this episode. Good God. I mean, good freaking God, man. I mean, you all hearing this for Christ's sake? Y'all hear this? Y'all hear this troll terrorism that's happening here? All right, I'm going to take a couple of more callers and that's it for Christ's sake. I'm taking a couple of more callers and that's it. 732 Radio Graffiti. Straight is good, straight is my pal. Oh, no, 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 You know, 
what? I'm done with this crap. All right? I'm done with this crap. I'm done. I'm done. Stick a goddamn fork in me. I'm done with this crap. Give me the mic. Give me the crap. Give me the goddamn mic. Give me the mic. Give me that freaking mic. I'm done with this crap, all right? Enough of you people. I, 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 I'm not letting you ruin my baller Friday, boy. Do you understand that? After this show, it's Miller time, baby, and I refuse. I refuse to allow you people to ruin my baller Friday. I'm not letting you do it, boy. I'm not letting you do it. I'm not going to let you ruin my baller Friday. Let me explain something to all you scumbags, all right? I'm a capitalist, all right? I'm a capitalist, and I deserve the respect accorded that title, boy. And let me tell you, you sorry sacks of crap may be besmirching me at this point in time. You may be disrespecting me at this point in time, but I guarantee you, I guarantee goddamn to you, when Donald Trump is elected president, you morons that are out here laughing, you idiots that are collecting government entitlements, you idiots that aren't paying for your food, you morons are going to be on your knees. You're going to be dropping to your knees, and you're going to be shining our shoes, boy. You're going to be spit-shining our shoes, boy. I'm telling you this. You people think I'm just talking up my derriere. I guarantee you, boy, this is a capitalist revolution. It is our time now, boy. It is our time. We have taken control of the GOP. It's ours. It belongs to us. Now we're going to take control of this White House. And when we take control of the White House, we are going to rock the planet. We are going to shake the world. And when I say we, I'm talking about the capitalists, not only here in America, but throughout the world. This broadcast is broadcasted all over the world. We have people that listen as far away as New Zealand, South Korea, Australia, Europe, South America, Mexico, Asia, you name it, they're everywhere, baby, and these are capitalists. These are individuals that no longer want to be dictated to by some stupid, filthy, soulless bureaucrat. These are people that are understanding and are becoming very aware that they want to be in charge of their life. They don't want some damn stupid, pathetic, soulless bureaucrat telling them where they can live, how much they can make, where they can go. What they can do, what they can say. I'm telling you, capitalists from throughout the international community are waking up. And I can feel it, baby. I can feel the spirit. I can feel the energy through this fiber optically connected world that we call the internet. I can feel it, baby. I can feel it. And I'm not I'm not joking around, folks. I can feel the capitalist specter that is looming over this country, the capitalist specter that is looming over the world, for Christ's sake. And how do you become a capitalist, folks? It's very simple. It's very simple. All you have to do is make money, all right? Get some kind of an occupation, a job, some way to make capital and get paid to do it. And moreover, folks, don't collect a government entitlement. Do not be dependent on government, because once you submit to government, you are submitting to your own serfdom. Once you submit to government, you are submitting to your own serfdom. And that's why I strongly implore everybody that is listening within the sound of my voice, become a capitalist. And by God, as I've suggested... I am writing a book, and believe me, I'm trying to churn this damn thing out as quick as possible, but I'm trying to write it so that everybody, no matter what reading level, no matter what capacity of individual, if you want to become a capitalist and you don't know how to do it, you have no idea, you're in another country, you know, you're in another area where capitalism isn't promoted, the tools necessary to, so one can become a capitalist, both mental, emotional, political, economical, I'm going to give it in this book, folks, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to it as fast as I can, but once again, bear with me, and it's going to be an ebook so that everybody has the opportunity to download it. It'll be very inexpensive, and the information in it will be invaluable, all right? I guarantee, man, it'll be invaluable, the information that is in this book. Moreover, if 
even an ambitious teenager, an ambitious uh, tween, reads this book and applies everything in this book to their life, they too can become a capitalist and start capitalizing and start thinking like a capitalist, start understanding the capitalist philosophy. You know, people always make the comment that, oh, well, I don't understand why everybody makes so much emphasis on money. I mean, you can't take it with you. So why are you making so much effort and energy to make the money? You stupid dumbass. You could apply that same idiotic thinking to the tribes that would go out and hunt for their tribes during tribal time. You could say that about them, saying, oh, you know, why are you going out and wasting all that time hunting and killing animals and all this stuff? I mean, it's just, you know, you you have one life to live, you stupid dumbass. You understand that? I mean, if, if you have a defeatist attitude already, then you've already lost. You're already walking around half dead. If you're trying to make believe that, oh, I don't understand why everybody has to make so much emphasis on money, and I don't get it, and I'm not going to do it. Well, if you're not going to do it, then don't bitch and moan. Don't be pissing and moaning like these Bernie Sanders supporters out here. Don't be pissing and moaning. As I've stated, it doesn't really matter what political system you look at, what political model you look at, for Christ's sake, all right? But you need to understand All right. Money makes the world go round. The difference between communists and socialists and capitalists, that in communism and socialism, the bureaucrats hold control of all the money, if not most of the money. In capitalism, the people have control of their own money, or at least a good majority of it. All right, folks. So once again, That's the difference. That's why I want to make as many capitalists as I possibly can. That is why I'm here. That's why I created this broadcast to spark synapses throughout the world, to utilize this communication method that is the Internet in hopes of teaching people that, hey, it's the bureaucrats that are the enemy. It's the soulless bureaucrats and their policies and their taxation and their social engineering laws and all this other nonsense that is causing the problems in your lives. It's not capitalism. It's not capitalists. It's the government. And the reason the government is causing problems, folks, is because you are not participating in it. You are not participating in it. But you see, now that Donald Trump has come out of nowhere and he has forced a spotlight into the political process, and as a result, you have millions upon millions of people that were not even or would never even consider being politically active now involved in the political process because of Donald Trump. And I'm telling you, folks, I'm telling you this right now. It's a capitalist revolution And I'm excited about it, and I hope you are too. Anyway, folks, I don't know if I'm going to have a spontaneous Saturday or a random Sunday edition of the broadcast. So if you want to be the first one to find out, please follow me on Twitter. Politics Ghost is the name to follow. All one word, no underscores. Politics Ghost. Moreover, folks, bookmark the official website of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. It is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. And spread it around like wildfire that we are live every Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. All right? I mean, let everybody know, for Christ's sake, man. Go to the blogs. Go to the forum posts. Go to the social media networks. Spread it around! Spread it around! Spread it around like wildfire so we can make and generate as many capitalists throughout the world as we possibly can, folks. Do you understand that? That is our mission. That is our goal. The capitalist army wants you, baby! The capitalist army wants you! Wants you! Because, once again, you and I are the new media. We are the new media. We are destroying the talking heads on the boob tube. We are refashioning the narrative of the populace. The power of communication belongs with us. The power of information belongs with us, and we need to keep it that way, folks. We need to keep it that way. 
Anyway, folks, I want to thank you very much for tuning in with me. Once again, I will for sure be back Monday, 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure to let everybody know that we're in effect and in the house. I am out of here. Thank you very much for tuning in with me. Long live the capitalist army and death to communism, death to socialism, death to feminism, and death, death, death to totalitarianism. Happy Baller Friday. I'm out of here, baby. <laughs> Woo, it's Militide. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.